What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We are doing some streaming. We're back in the wonderful world of streaming. We've got to talk about some rugby, some Six Nations. It's 2023. We're doing a stream, all that fun stuff. Hopefully we are going to have no technical issues. It has been a while since I streamed. It was December last time I streamed. Why are we already on this screen? Let's go over here. Let's go on to some... You can, hang on, let's move over to this one. See? Already technical issues. First one of the day. The chat's working. Hey, we're off to a great start. <laughs> normally when we start these streams, I've normally got to fix like a thousand things. Jabberwocky already in the chat. First of many. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully it will be the uh, the first of many over this year. There's so much to talk about. I'm getting into the Six Nations spirit. There are so many videos coming out on the channel uh, I've been prepping all this week. I've had a, a week off work this week, so literally every day has been spent video prepping. I've got videos coming out tomorrow, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I've got to do another two videos tomorrow to fill in Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Uh, and then on Thursday, the teams get announced. Round one. Then we've got preview videos to do on the Thursday. Other teams will get announced on the Friday. More preview videos. Then we've got... Games on on the Saturday, match reports, we've got the world rankings on the Monday. Oh man, every day, every day. It's going to be super busy, but I'm getting super, super excited to talk about some rugby and do some fun stuff today. I've also got a bit of a surprise. I've gone away over the uh, the Christmas break and I've been looking into it. For anyone who hasn't seen the, the big review video that I did on Rugby 22, it is live on the channel. It's two hours long. It took... I don't even know how many times that length to actually edit the thing together. Uh, but now that that's done, I've got all the footage I needed from Rugby 22. I have decided to look into changing it up a bit, mixing up this Rugby 22, because we're still not really sure if there's a Rugby 23 or a World Cup game coming. And I feel a bit bad that we're still missing out on a lot of teams. So with it being a Six Nation stream, I have gone away. I've spent some time on Google, YouTube reviews, everything, checking it out. And I have found some fun mods that people have done for the game. So we are now playing on a modded version of Rugby 22. We can now actually do a Six Nations. Six Nations is now in the game. Uh, so I thought that's going to be an awesome thing to do today. We'll pick some teams, play some Six Nations, see if we can actually win. Been a while since I've actually played. It's kind of weird. I know I, I play this game a lot, but I also do like the, the big videos and stuff. I had to do a lot of footage. But I didn't realize actually it has been probably a good month or so since I've played this game. <laughs> so I probably might lose a few games. Who's excited for the Six Nations coming up? I am. I cannot wait for it to uh, to get going. I've also been messing about with my uh, my things. I'm going to see if these work. These were from a little bit of a while ago. I don't know if these still work. Oh, there you are. Look at this. Magic I Am. Subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Magic I Am. Yeah, I've been getting notifications, which I've just never had working, to be honest. I just suck at getting things to work on a uh, on a technical side. So there are a bunch of things that people have been doing that now actually work. Like, Caradog71, subscribe to the channel. Thank you, Caradog. Yeah, so if you are subscribing, donating, all that fun stuff, theoretically, theoretically, <laughs> it is all going to work. I have got some stuff set up, so hopefully we'll get some notifications throughout the stream, because that'll be fun. That feels like I'm doing actually something correct, isn't it? Uh, Hansi says, hey, mate. Hi, Hansi. How are you doing, man? Are you looking forward to the Six Nations stream, talking about some Six Nations? I I'm really looking forward to see what other people have to say about this as well. Uh, Alex Hubbard, uh, I'm looking forward to the Six Nations, meaning that it's almost two years since I first saw your video on the video of the Wales England game for 40 minutes I fell in love with your channel awesome yeah man that was they were great fun I, I really enjoyed doing them it makes something I've always enjoyed doing with this channel is just trying different things different styles of videos and doing stuff so that one was because I, I'm a big fan of Squidge Rugby um or when before I started doing YouTube I enjoyed his style of videos and I was like you know what I really want to have a crack at doing those sorts of videos man do they take a lot of work i'm not sure if he has like a like a writing team and an editing team behind him doing that as a one person job is ridiculous amount of work that took an entire week to do it you have to write a script revise your script like three times go and find footage of the game not get copyright striked <laughs> then edit it all down you're only allowed to do like five six minute segments of of actual live gameplay before you get copyright strike so if you go and watch like a squid rugby video you'll see how often there's little slivers of video man so much effort really enjoy doing them though uh but yeah haven't haven't done one of them for a, a little while um, Howard Thomas in the in the chat now. Looking forward uh, to the next few months. Injury free, I hope. We'll see. I mean, there's already injuries. Uh, been named Reese Zamet. I'm still not sure if he's fully fit. He's been named in the team. He's got in. Uh, Owen Farrell has managed to get out of his 
is ban that he was definitely having but has been on a training course like a driver's awareness course and managed to get out of his his ban so looks like teams are uh, hopefully going to be uh, pretty stocked that welsh guy says hi how are you i'm all right welsh guy how are you doing today i'm getting excited for the six nations Everyone is getting excited. Look at the chat. Chat's blowing up. I don't really used to having this many people in the chat at one time. It's great fun. Uh, Six Nations, one of the best. Absolutely. Uh, I think it's going to be a, a real just tight competition. For anyone who saw the video, there is a new video out today. I, I didn't know whether I was going to release it today, but I thought with doing the stream, a lot of people are going to ask me the same questions about who I think is going to win or who who's going to beat who. So I was like, I've got to get that video out today, uh, going over my predictions for the games. I've still got them all sort of set up on here somewhere so I can go through them all. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be real tight. I'm really looking forward to that Ireland-France uh, game. Uh, Toby Davis says, Dewey Lake injured. Yeah, I know. I heard about that yesterday. There's there's a couple of injuries coming out. Um, uh, there's two for England as well. Jamie George has gone out with an injury. Someone else from the England team also did. I did pay attention, I promise. But I, I'm not that good at remembering people. Um, yeah, no, Dewey Lake out. I, a real shame for Dewey Lake. There was, there was a big talk because, of course, Ken Owens got the captaincy. Uh, and I think Ken Owens would be a great captain. I'm so glad he's back in the uh, the Wales side. The only thing I was a bit sad about was because he's fully fit and captain, it meant Dewey Lake probably wasn't going to get a good amount of game time, which is a real shame because I want him to be starting. Um, and again, it kept being that fight between him and Ryan Elias. Ryan Elias not in the team. It's like, oh, everything's working for him, and now he's out injured. No game time at all. Real shame for him. Uh, Jabberwocky says Farrell should have had six weeks. Yeah, I can't remember what he was initially given. Um, was it six weeks or did he get four weeks and reduce it down? I can't remember what he did. I'm still not sure. There's a whole thing about the new tackle laws. I'm sure people will want to get into talk about the uh, the tackle laws in a bit. Let me swap over to the game. Because uh, we, uh, we can get some fun stuff going on. I do enjoy chatting with you, though. I enjoy seeing what's going on. So let me quickly show up before I keep reading chat. So uh, I have downloaded a mod. I am not going to claim anything for this mod. There is a wonderful guy uh, who I found on YouTube called... Alex Gaming, I think. He's a French dude. Um, I'm not sure if he built the mod himself or if he was just showcasing it. That's the channel I saw it on. Uh, and it is awesome. For anyone playing um, Rugby 22, he's added in an actual like World Cup thing up here. Uh, you can now go through. We've got an actual South Africa team, because uh, I know there's a couple of uh, South African subscribers who enjoy watching this. There's now a, an actual uh, Springboks team in there. Uh, he's added in the Gallagher Premiership. So you can now play with all the uh, the English club level teams. Awesome. Love that people are doing this. I don't know how much the work this would take. Um, it was awesome. But like, yeah, got England in there as well now. Not necessarily that the player models are like perfect, but man, this guy has just done it off his own back and made this work. Um, we've got like, obviously no pictures in the, in the top for the player name stuff, but an actual set of teams. The commentators say their names and everything. You must have gone back and taken lines and stuff from, from Roby Trade to do it. Awesome work, but we now actually have a, a Six Nations, so I thought that'd be a lot of fun to get into. In fact, let's play one game. <laughs> Before we jump into the Six Nations, just to prove I'm not actually terrible, let's um, <laughs> let's sort of uh, ease back into this a little bit, shall we? Let's, uh, let's go, because I haven't actually played with the Springboks team since it's been added. Who else got added to the... Uh, the international spectrum. Uh, oh, did Argentina get added in? Oh, let's play Argentina. I know this is a Six Nations stream. Immediately, I'm jumping off it to do, like, rugby championship stuff, but I haven't played with the teams. Um, let me chuck this on. Uh, let's take that off in eight minutes. We don't want to play eight-minute matches. Uh, we'll get in. We'll play a game. Oh, take the controller off the thing before it starts vibrating. Awesome. Pro streamer over here. We read a bit more of the chat. Uh, as a South African guy, uh, I don't have any real affinity to any of the team. But because I had a great party with Gavin Hastings and Rob Wainwright after the 95, uh, I'll always support the Scots. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of Scottish boys getting real excited for this one. Scotland have been getting ever closer to just being able to win consistently these, these big games in the Six Nations. Beating France two years ago. Didn't see that one coming. Um, I, I think they're in with a good shout. Ireland-Scotland is going to be a game I'm really looking forward to uh, see getting on. I've also just realised, because I was doing videos, I took off the audio, didn't I? Yes. Okay, let's put the commentary back on. Because I want to I want to sort of showcase just how much like work has gone into this guy's mod to actually make this. It is incredible. Someone has spent so much time finishing this game off <laughs> for like a multi-million pound company off his own back oh Khaleesi gets through the uh, through the middle there with Pimpy 
Oh, goes down. Uh, Courtney Laws is injured, you think? Oh, was it Courtney Laws and uh, Jamie George? That might have been the other one. I remember Jamie George because there's another Jamie. Jamie Blamire has come now into the squad. I can't remember. I've been doing videos uh, like leading up to today, getting ready for coming out this week. So tomorrow is... Oh, Cheslin Colby. Oh, just walking over. Um... Yeah, tomorrow's video is the uh, the Wales squad announcement because there's been a few adjustments and I'm a bit late to the uh, to the stream uh, to the stream. I'm on the stream. A bit late to the the world of rugby, I should say. After doing the the big video, um, look at that lovely little offload. Um, so I'm doing all the squad announcements now, leading up pre like we're getting into Six Nations. So Ireland comes out on Friday. Wales comes out on Thursday. I've still got to film the the England and Scotland one, so I'm not caught up completely on the Scotland and Ireland and Scotland and England team as they stand at the minute. Beautiful kick over the post, um, but I will get a bit more versed in that before we get round to it. Uh, Easy Ollie's in the chat. Hello all. Uh, woke up years so of time for England to get back to our best. Getting hopeful for that England team. To be honest, England. I still uh, I still rue the fact that England feel like they've probably got the best pool to be out in. Um, out of all the World Cup pools. So I think there's a very good chance you'll be seeing England at least getting out of those pool stages. Um, I'm really looking forward to if we get to see England versus Australia in the quarterfinals. Won't that be fun? If you get around to see... Uh, see Dylan, get the way. If we get to see um, Eddie Jones coaching his Australian team going back up against England... What will England have in the back pocket? It must be on coaches' minds to to get something instilled in that team before you get to that game. <laughs> because Eddie Jones will know exactly what to expect from that team by then. Oh, here we go. Cheslin Colby again, finding himself a bit of room. Oh, that's a late tackle, ref. Good dodge by number 12. Get back here. I'm actually not sure what the uh, what the setup for it is. Oh, it's a Beth. Big glide, no. <laughs> <laughs> in the real world, he smashes through those tackles with a bit more ease. Yakane goes down. Andre Pollard goes in. Uh, what else have we said? Oh my goodness, chat's flying through. Uh, I'm doing great, thanks. I can't wait for the Six Nations to start. Yeah, man, everyone's getting super excited. It feels like a real boom around the Six Nations this year. I think it's because it's not... I think a lot of times when it goes into the Six Nations, there's, there's sort of one favourite uh, going in, or at least I think that's the way it's felt going in since I've had the channel anyway there's always one team that I'm like I feel like this team's going to win this year um, and normally there's just a couple of upsets that, that throw it off along the way if it doesn't go that way um, but this year Ireland and, and France really looking to um, to compete with each other oh not going to get through there um, I think that's going to be such an awesome game to see how that one gets on it does make it a little bit more exciting to see who's going to get where. I also think there's a really big thing. I think it'll get overshadowed by the fact of, of Ireland and France playing each other. Um, but I think there's a real big talking point to uh, to have a look at how Wales, Scotland and England fare against each other. Um, because when I was doing the, uh, the predictions video, it was quite interesting after doing the final table. I don't like prep it in advance. I, I genuinely do the predictions. And then I make the table afterwards and see what I came up with. Um, it's interesting, I still had England ahead of Wales and Scotland. Um, even though Scotland, I assume theoretically, are the most consistent team coming in now. No real changes to the actual team sheet as far as I'm aware. Um, there's no oh, changing in the, uh, in the coaching departments and stuff. So they should be looking to have a, a really good year, but it's interesting that, that England still finished ahead of that for me. Oh, get over for a try. Beautiful little try there. Uh, let's quickly scroll back over to the, uh, the chat. Can't go over there. Uh, let's just quickly scroll back through the chat. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, you learn most of your rugby knowledge from Squid Rugby. Yeah, he's he's very, very good at what he does. He's a really nice guy. Have met him. Met him once in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> got talking to him about rugby probably sick of having people do that um but yeah he's a really nice guy um let's have a quick look through the uh things people are saying uh it's supposed to be six not given or and only serving three week oh he's supposed to be given to six uh yeah so he was allowed to he is gonna be allowed to start that that game for england i believe um i'm still not sure what that course does for you to do with the tackling don't tackle people in the head oh, okay Okay, ban and done. I'm not really sure what you uh, 
<laughs> what you learn from that. Uh, Kian says, uh, do you see my last comment, Dragon? Uh, is it in the in the chat today or is it on a video? I know you said that you were going to be on the stream today, so nice to see you out here in the stream. Uh, uh, Elliot Daly out, though. Yeah. Is he out with, with an actual injury or is he just not, not picked for the team? Um, I feel like I actually read something about him being out injured. Um, Elliot Daly is, I, I think, quite a crucial part of that England team. Um, if, if I was picking a team, I would have Elliot Daly. I would always have Elliot Daly on the bench, um, is the thing for me. Because I just think he can play wing, even though you know, not many people are really putting him on wing. But he can play wing. He's still very good in fullback. And and he did surprise me when he moved to uh, moved to centre when he was playing for England as well. I think in terms of, of a replacement, he's a bit of a super sub. Um, so I'm not really sure who else England have in the wings. I mean, there must be people. I mean, the player pool that England have <laughs> must be thousands of players. Um, you'd think there must be someone that uh, that matches his criteria of multiple positions plus long-range kicking, even if they're sort of young. I mean, look at Freddie Stewart. Where did Freddie Stewart come from? You know, and now he's an absolute staple in that team. Finding these younger lads in there somewhere is, uh, is a real boost, but there hasn't really been anyone to... To coincide, a couple of people have, have sort of got into the team, not quite found that 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 same you know consistency. Oh, that was not a right oh, kick too fair. Can't happy with that one. Um, like Max Malin sort of pops in and out of the England team every so often, but just not having that same impact. Um, there's a couple of other ones. I, I I think I think Elliot Daly might be missed, especially for games that are close. Again, the 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 long range kicker. I really think that's a, an element more teams need. Find your your cannon leg players. Australia have Reese Hodge. Uh, England have Elliot Daly. Like, there's got to be one in every team, I think, that you just take your, your long range kicking <laughs> from 60 metres away. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe low accuracy, but, you know, high distance. I feel like that's a real weapon to have in your arsenal. Let's try and uh, drop this back. I'm going to go for a cheeky little kick into the corner here. See if we that can clears the steal a little line. Okay, he was ready for that. He was ready for that way too easily. He was already stood back there. Getting across with that one. After Clerk. Get in that corner. Kicking. Get in the corner. Oh, ho, 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 ho. what a cheeky little kick. It's also a 50-22. I tried for about three hours to get this very shot right now for that big video about Rugby 22. I couldn't make it happen. <laughs> Doing it on stream. First game back. Yep, absolutely. Got it done now. Not very much use for me. Let's just see if we can pop this out quickly. And we'll pop pass. Oh, couldn't get it to Dialende. Off to Clerk. Oh, gets shut down. Very close though. Waiting for it to come. Etzebeth, pop it out. Timmer Pimpy. Oh, wow. Great cover tackle. Who was that? It's a clearing kick. Superb job by Argentina to shut this one down. Okay, Larue. Oh, there's got to be numbers. Let's just go wide, boys. All the way. Oh, near Carne can't get the pass away. Is Lacani Am goes up the inside? No, he doesn't. Trying to be fancy. After Clerk, great little pop pass there. Cheslin Colby. Who's going to stop him? Oh. <laughs> go quickly. I mean, ref offside. Not fixed in this game. Of course it's not. Why would you have an offside rule? And the ball will go into the kick, to be fair. Let's just try and the get that one back in. Uh, Toby Davis says, Wales Grand Slam? Question mark. Uh, I would be surprised, to be honest. I, I'm i in two minds about how I feel Wales are going to get on. Pe Warren Gatlin's come back in now. It's boosted the confidence a lot. A lot of people are very happy. Team for Wales has been picked. It's relatively similar um, to... The teams we've seen from Warren Gatland, including some, some older names that I'm still surprised keep getting in. People like Cuthbert. You know, I feel like there's got to be other wingers um, that could be getting into the team. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a similar um, Gatland team. But everyone's very confident that just because Gatland took over back to where we were a few years back now, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to be that easy. I think missing Sean Edwards in the defence. I, I don't really remember Wales scoring an immense amount of points under Warren Gatland. I always remember Wales not scoring a lot, but conceding less, and they won quite a few games. Um, and of course, with some, some different ones in there. But I'm a little bit worried there's a lot of faith in Warren Gatland. I'm really hoping he doesn't come back win nothing <laughs> and completely tarnish what was a great career for him. Um... Easy Ollie says, Laws and Curry out. 
Uh, hopefully it means Jack Willis and Earls. Oh, yeah, it was Tom Curry. I think because Ben Curry got announced, didn't he? I don't know if Ben Curry's still in the uh, still in the team. Um, Sam Gidding says, happy days to come home to this. Yeah, Sam, come in. Get into the stream. Get into the chats. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, what I will do. Uh, so we want to start doing a league. So now, because this guy that's done this mod is awesome, um, we now have the Six Nations. There is an actual Six Nations in this game. Uh, so we can pick what team we want to play with, and I'm going to leave that up to you guys. You can pick. I'm going to wait for you to put some put some comments in, whatever people say. I'll go with the majority of the answers that I hear uh, as to who's going to go in. I did test that it worked with Ireland, so I've sort of done a few games with Ireland, but I was just sort of simulating the matches. But it does work, and I'm very happy we get to have an actual Six Nations. So we can play through a tournament today with a team that we, uh, that we fancy. Uh, England and Wales will be very close to Ireland and France. Scotland and Italy will be left behind. Oh, Ollie's going for the for the big calls here. Oh, no, why, why, why are you thinking that, Ollie? What about Scotland is uh, is not impressing you? I feel like the Scotland team is building slowly. They just, for whatever reason, don't quite get that that step up in consistency. But they play some teams extremely well. Um, I, I really hope Scotland enter the, the, the competition and, and get some good wins. I think it'd be so nice and getting towards that World Cup. But for some reason, I'm still... I, I think that step back is still away from the top boys at the minute. But they've got South Africa and uh, Ireland in the pools. And I just... At the minute, I just don't see Scotland beating either of those teams in, in the pools. Even though they've got a good selection of players, there's some high talent in there, they've got a good coaching staff behind them. They can play different tactics, um, so I'm 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 hoping they they can get there by the World Cup, but it might be a little bit too short for now. We'll have to see how they get on in the in the Six Nations. Um, Daly is the best utility player, says Jabberwocky. Yeah, I think he's been I think he's been awesome. Um, I think he will be missed in that team. I'm not really sure if every team has sort of a player like him. I mean, winger, fullback, and centre is a difficult coverage. Geordie Barrett's the only one that sort of springs to my mind now who covers all those positions Josh Adams I don't think that's quite the same level but he can play all of them he can play all the positions um, I still don't put Josh Adams at centre personally uh, but I think he's very good on the wing um, Hansel Collins and Murley top most wing metrics in the Prem and Championship Cup both very excited to see both oh I'll have to keep an eye out for them to be honest I don't know either of those names and I've just lost all of my chat <laughs> Superb, what's going on there? Okay, hang on. Gotta try and do some fixes. Don't know what's happening there. I think that's OBS being annoying. Um <laughs> Oh, and now there's like a thousand chats. Okay, so apparently chat has been stuck for a while and I have not known this. So let me uh, let me quickly scroll back through. Um Are you going to any games? I got uh, tickets for three at the minute. Wow, Sam, you are spending the big bucks. Yeah, I uh, I don't have any tickets for the games. It's only thing that comes with doing the channel. Um, It's wanting to do like the match reports and like try and get stuff out as soon as the games are over. Uh, It really sort of damages the ability to go to um, two games because uh, if, if you're there, you can't do filming and the channel isn't big enough at the minute. It's one thing that's still struggling on YouTube at the minute is because my channel's not very big, the amount of people that, people that watch your video, you know, p- because it's you making a video, is like, you know, relatively low in the world of YouTube terms. Um, but because it's already low, it means not a lot of people then get shown your video by YouTube. So for me, the only thing I have in terms of getting views and getting more people to the channel is speed. <laughs> speed after a game is done. So going to see a, a game, coming back from the game, and then doing a video, uh, sort of, I don't know. If, if I was going to do that, I probably just wouldn't do a match report after it because it probably wouldn't you know, have a great deal of, uh, of purpose there. But going to three games, man, that's awesome. Uh, best gamers in the chat. Come on, England. Yeah, best gamer. Heavy uh, heavy England support again. Excited there. Uh, I think Wales will look like a very good team. Jenkins, Chinuza, Morgan, Rafael, Grady coming through. Yeah, I, there's there's some some real good people. Mason Grady, I'm really looking forward to seeing him make an impact into um, into the, the world of internationals. Um, okay, we've got uh, we've got a couple of votes here. So someone's England. We've got Wales, Wales. Wales, Ireland, little uh, little niche double. <laughs> Scotland, Hansi won Scotland, of course. Uh, Wales, uh, just don't think Scotland are on the same level. The top four, yeah, maybe not at the minute. Um, uh, yeah, I think there's still a bit of distance between them. Be Italy, that would be a challenge. Our oh, Bears gamer just wants just wants the hardcore stuff. 
<laughs> Straight from the off. Right, okay. So the majority of people have said Wales. We'll go as Wales for now. Uh, if we want to do an Italy run, we could absolutely do an Italy run after this. Let's uh, let's start off the first game. We are playing Italy to start off with. This will be fun. I'm so happy there's mods like this out there. People do people do such good work for doing mods. Oh, does anyone notice any problems either in that last that last game? I think it was awesome. Also, let me know if uh, if volumes and stuff are okay. By the way, if if the game's too loud or if I'm too quiet compared to the, the game volume stuff, I can adjust audio as we're going. It's a bit hard when you're on my side to know <laughs> if everything's working or not. Right, nice early penalty. We will move up the field a little bit. I was going to talk about something else, wasn't I then? I completely forgot. I got distracted by something. What were we talking about? <laughs> if you've never been to a stream before, if you're new to the stream, uh, one, subscribe, because it helps the channel out. Uh, but two, you will come to know me as the guy that will have some real fun talking points about rugby. And then we'll forget halfway through what he was talking about and move on to something else. <laughs> it does happen a lot. I'm trying to get better at it. Oh, what a sidestep there. Coming in from the Italian flanker. Let's see if we can recover this one. Oh, Dan Bigger. Oh, Dan Bigger going on himself there. Has the audio turned itself back off? The commentary? I can't hear it in the background. I will, I will be the commentary. <laughs> it's not like the commentary in uh, Rugby 22 was uh, that incredible anyway. Let's go for a little crossfield kick. Put them on the back foot. Nope, they caught that one nice and easily. Reese Zamet goes in for a lovely tackle there. We'll just cover this side. Good tackle. Good double tackle. Bit of a hole in this midfield. Let's, uh, hang on. Let's spread that line width down a little bit. A little bit too wide at the minute. Italy. Go a little bit outside. Oh, nice. Trying to show off. Come on, boys. Get in there. Tibrick on the outside. Here we go. And a nice little handoff there as well as he gets taken down just before the five meter line. Let's pass out wide bid. Off to Navidi going in. Oh, nearly managing to uh, find the gap there. Spread out wide. Dan Bigger to Ken Owens. Pop back. Oh, what an interception. Who was that? Gar BC. Absolutely superb pick off by him. And they'll go for the clearance here. There's the opportunity to potentially go for a bit of a cheeky recovery. Let's go left. Let's see what Ken Owens can do in that midfield. Nothing. Man, they close you down in space so much. Something I enjoyed so much about doing that big Rugby 22 video was I went back to go and play um, Rugby 2011, obviously, because uh, I had to get the footage to, to include in that video. Man, do I enjoy going back and playing Rugby 2011. It feels so good. <laughs> I really hope the next rugby game we get coming out is, uh, is going to be sitting on that pile. Lovely little grubber kick. Using the meta, taking down the, uh, the fullback. We got over that. Ken Owens. Good steal. And away we go. Um, Hansi says, Darcy Graham's injured. Oh, I didn't know about that one. It, when did um, when did he pick up an injury? I thought he was actually... He was named in the original squad, wasn't he? Or has he got an injury, but he's been picked in the squad to uh, still play? I thought he was I thought he was okay. It's a poor kickoff. We'll let that one go. Yeah, we're fine with that. Um, Jabberwocky asks, can Gatland turn Wales around? Well, it's a weird, it's a weird point. Because the, uh, people, it's really tough. Because people keep thinking about, like, oh, Wales are doing so badly. Wales have had, like, a bad year, or a bad 18 months. It's so weird to think about that Wales won the Six Nations two years ago. Because... There's just no memory of it, because it was probably the most surprising win of a Six Nations I've ever experienced, because there were so many games where it felt like they probably shouldn't have won. Um, oh, that's a weird kick. I don't know why they've gone for that. So, like, turning Wales around, like, Wales have realistically only had, like, one bad year. <laughs> but they do need turning around, because the, the year last year was poor. Go for a kick goal. Let's mix it up. A kick Are bonus points a thing points. of this? I've only just thought about that. Should I be going for bonus points? There's every chance I actually do lose a game here. Lovely kick. Can't be good. Throwing it up there. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think you'll do better. I think there'll be more confidence in the team. There was a couple of games I see it. The Italy to, to, to describe it from like a viewer standpoint, it really felt like Wales just believed in both of those games. That they were just going to win. Like, we're going to beat Italy because they're Italy. And then we're just going to beat Georgia because they're Georgia. And, and you could see it on the players' faces. They weren't... 
It didn't look like they were trying that hard. It didn't look like people were trying to mix up the game a little bit. It just looked like they were just going through the motions. Ah, it'll be all right. Eventually, we'll win. And, I, 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 and it happened in both games, and it sort of caught them off guard, I think, by the end of it to, have, to lose both those games. So what I'm hoping from, from Gatland is that he sort of instills the concept of, like, it doesn't matter who you're playing, don't... Don't just think you're going to win. You need to get out there. You need to be scoring points. You need to be taking three points when they're available, you know. If you're not scoring the tries because teams are getting better in defence, just keep taking threes. Nothing wrong with that. How many points did Wales turn down in that Italy game? You know, or the Georgia game. Just, just not taking three points because they don't fancy it. Oh, here we go, Josh Adams. Oh, here we go, cheeky up and under. Keep on it, keep on it, Josh. Nice move there. Will you still be with Wales in another year? Who knows? <laughs> Will he be over at Leon? It's no longer in this Wales team. We're going to need to have a new World Cup game soon because so many people are moving abroad <laughs> for Wales. There's no one. There's no one left in the in the roster anymore. Oh no. Brex getting down the wing. Superb recovery there. Right, I need to actually try and go for tries, though. I want to kick this ball out, but... My God. Legend difficulty is tough. I also think the mod for the game, I think, might be... Like, a patch before the final patch that the guys did at Rugby 22. I have noticed a couple of things with players... Sort of running slightly out of position. And the, the luck system feels way more, like, intense. Why was that my knock-on? What did I do wrong? Didn't he have the ball? It was his ball. <laughs> what do you mean, my knock-on? I didn't do anything. Um, what's your opinion on Cardiff Rugby? Uh, getting a season pass next season. I have tickets to Judgment Day. Oh, awesome. I've been to Judgment Day a few times. Judgment Day is great value for money. Um, I've been to th three Judgment Days, I think. Getting to see like back-to-back -back games is awesome. Um, it's a bit of a shame they, they seem to sell out so quickly now. Again, it's one of the things, it just becomes a thing. You've got to buy them like on the day or you lose all the, the really good seats. I've got a big group of friends that enjoy going. So we go as like a group of, I don't know, how many we go as like eight before. Uh, but just trying to find that many seats together on a different day is, is difficult. Um, I keep calling Cardiff Blues, Cardiff Blues, as I just did then. I was going to say I keep calling Cardiff, Cardiff Blues. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I I'm not really sure how they're doing at the minute club level wise. I heard Ospreys got a got a great win um, in the European Championship, so I think they're 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 on it at the minute. I think I think just Welsh clubs at the minute are struggling anyway, aren't they? <laughs> I hope I hope things improve. Um, the last couple of games I've gone to, I haven't gone to a club game. God, I haven't gone to a club game since probably pre-virus that we can't say for uh, monetary reasons on YouTube. Um, yeah, I think the last game I went to see, I went to see a Ospreys versus Scarlets game uh, down at Park Scarlets. It was a good laugh. Uh, but you do notice it. It's one thing that I, you do really notice uh, going to a couple of Welsh club level games is is a bit of a lack of a number of people attending, um, which is a bit of a shame because, you know, there are a lot of the England, you know, club level games. Hack Stadium's absolutely full. <laughs> and then you go to like a... Go to a Wales club game. Oh my goodness, that's a great kick. Um, and you know, to see so many empty seats is is never good. It's not going to be helping the, the team at all. Okay, Zamet's got to do something exceptional here, and kind of does. Oh, Tipperick, don't go into touch. All right, George North. I don't know why you're at my scrum half position. In touch. That's not a great kick. <laughs> uh, let's go. The guy who comes up with the mods do incredible work. Oh, things are happening. I'm not paying attention. Go to ground. This Give me a ruck. A there we go. Uh, you use a lot of them on Rugby 08. Have you ever seen your channel? Uh, finger cross. They will not be needed for the next game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Rugby 08. Yeah, I've seen... I've seen... Uh, oh! There we go. You mentioned about the channel the other day, Bears. Um, and I did I did click on your channel. I saw you did... Um, oh, it was... Uh, like a South African... It was... Uh, your thumbnail name was... Um, was Crafter Clerk in, in Rugby 08. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> people, are, people are modding Rugby 08. Like, that's incredible. Isn't it kind of sad that we're modding 13-year-old games? <laughs> because they're the games the games we enjoy enough. But yeah, man, the the, the, the work people have put in to do this. I, I, I've I've been truly impressed by this. I was a little bit worried because the, the guy, who, it, oh, this channel, he's, he's a French dude. Uh, who I found that, that has this exact mod. I'm not sure if, if you've ever had this one. Um... I was a little bit worried because he was French would suddenly all the languages be in French and stuff like he's gone and got all the commentary from in English as well for all the player names and stuff 
it, there's hours of work involved in that. You don't get paid. The mod is free. Like, that is just people who love the sport, love the game genre. And it, it's, it's so... It's incredible work. And the fact that these people don't work for a rugby game. <laughs> Imagine getting, like, someone who mods this game just in it knack on and just said, why don't we just, like, just do this and just fix the game and, and do stuff. It doesn't know me about licenses, though. I've never quite gathered the, the concept of licenses in games. Like, this game doesn't have the the England, South African, Argentina licenses, you know. And it's... I, I never know why you don't want your, your game... Uh, sort of shown off, or your team, sorry, shown off in a game. Because uh, I feel like there must be a real benefit. I've also never got really about stadiums. Oh, that was a terrible pass by me. Like, why is there not official stadiums? Why would there be licenses on stadiums? What would it matter? If you, I don't know, like principalities. A principality took over the Millennium Stadium, for example. And, um, but obviously principality is like a building society. Can you imagine, like, any better, like, advertisement, like, for free than just saying, hey, why, rather than having your made-up stadiums in the game, just use ours for free. Just just make one look like our stadium. And realistically, it wouldn't look that different, would it? I mean, you, you spend most of the time looking at a pitch and a couple of, like, people over here in the crowd. <laughs> it wouldn't be that different. You could just have the, the outside picture of the Principality Stadium. Boom, you've just amazingly got your stadium advertised, your building society advertised to everyone who plays this game. I have no understanding why people wouldn't want their, you know, thing in a game like this, but there we are. Like, what's, like, what's Namibia got going on? Why, what game is Namibia licenses tied into? Why have we not got Namibia? If you're over in the marketing department for Namibia, you want some money, get over to these guys and be like, hey, chuck us in your game, why not? No, we just don't have Namibia to play as anymore. World Cup team, we don't even have them. 17-0, not, uh, not a bad start. So pretty happy with that first game. Uh, oh my goodness, there's a, there's a whole bunch of different people there, are you saying? Oh my goodness, is this is that a list of your... Um, your the injury list, Hansi? I'm just having a little look through that. So, so Darcy Graham, Jonathan Dante. John, oh, Dante's out as well, is he? Robbie Henshaw I knew about. Um, Villiers, Garbi is Garbisi out? Oh man, I need to catch up. I need to catch up with all these. Um, Luca Curry, Dodge man, Dodge missing out. That's a real shame for him. Cameron Vuki, um, Rollins. I think Will Rollins might have been a a fifty fifty one anyway with his uh, with his move to a new team. Delochi, Cowan, Dicky, Cross man. There's there's a lot of people. Oh, Arundel as well. Uh, we also won't be seeing any Rufus McLean. Or McLean, sorry, I'm gonna get pronounced and butchered now. If anyone doesn't know about that situation, that seems like a mad one that's been going on. I've seen uh, seen a bit of news about uh, about him, <laughs> but we uh, we won't be seeing him. I've just realised my face is sort of in the way of uh, of the thing. Can I like? Hang on, so you guys can see the the current rankings. There you are. Currently, we're uh, we're down here. So unfortunately, I don't think we can see. In fact, how does the uh, the schedule look? Can I. Everything on this works. It's so good, man. It's so good. Uh, so currently, France two from two, England one from one, Italy. Italy are up in third. Italy beat someone. Who did Italy beat? Big upset for the Six Nations. It's a premonition. They beat Scotland, thirty-seven twenty-five. Get your bets on Sky Bet now. <laughs> what a turnaround for them. Um, oh, England dominating Ireland as well at the top there. France just narrowly pipping Scotland. France beating Ireland. Wow, wait, Ireland. I'm apparently. Oh, I'll take back all my predictions then. Ireland are getting hammered so far in this uh, in this series. Anyway, <laughs> Wales England. It's kind of interesting actually. I think so far most of the games have actually feel like they've been in the right order. How does that work? Is that just by luck that the games are actually being played in the right stadiums? Like Wales are playing away. Oh, Eng Ireland are playing England at home, aren't they? Or are they? Yes, they are. Yeah, okay, so it's not all of them are correct, but some of them just, it felt weird. Wales, England, is, like, is in Wales. I was like, oh, there's, there's, a, there's a consistency. Not only are the mods, <laughs> like, greater creating a game, they've they've captured the Six Nations. No, they haven't. That was just, <laughs> that's me being overly hopeful. Let me move my my face back over here so it's not going to be in the way. Um, 
Sam asks, what's your thoughts on the new tackle rule? Um, I think s- silly decision made. I don't know what it'll do. I've spent I've spent a bit of time looking into it. I haven't made a video on it because I don't know if that's the sort of video people people care about that much. Um, for me, the issue in, in the... the heck, uh, let's walk back. <laughs> This is what happens. People get me talking. I want to. I want to chat about stuff. Um, yeah, the, the the tackle situation for me is is the fact that it's not um, all these head contact injuries and concussion things. To me, aren't because like people are tackling too high. If people tackle too high, it's quite evident. Yeah, all right. They tackle too high. Yellow card comes out. We've seen it more and more now. It's the way it's going. Um, One of the things that I think they need to fix instead is there needs to be a better rule around the player carrying the ball not being allowed to just stick their head down. It's it's something that does bother me a lot is the the idea that players... You you notice it now when attackers running at a defensive line, if, if defenders waiting to tackle... A lot of attackers now just bend down into the into the collision. Sometimes they're trying to like bump them with the shoulder, sometimes they just run head down first like a... What's the... The dinosaur with like the big bone skull that just charges forward, like a rhinoceros sort of thing, and just charge forward. And the problem is when you just put your head down and run forwards, like you can't do anything other than tackle them in the head. And I think at that stage the rule needs to change. I think they should scrap the new rule they put in about the hip height thing, um, and instead change the rule to be it's head contact. If the defender's clear, if they, yeah, the defender's clearly standing upright and makes contact there upwards yeah all right you've tackled high clearly you've tackled high penalty yellow card if you want to do the yellow card thing i think there should be an inverse rule of you're also responsible for your own safety so if you run with the ball in hand and you're bent in half running head first and someone shoulders you in the head i don't think that should be a penalty i think it should go to the go to the tmo review as contact to the head let's review it great we're gonna have a look back at it now We've reviewed it. The guy is bent in half <laughs> and he's run into a guy's shoulder. There's no other area to tackle. He's got a concussion. Off you go. You know, HIA, take him off. No penalty. That guy ran into you with his head down. His own safety. He's not playing with his own safety in mind. And that way you remove... And players might want to then run more upright. You, the last thing you want to do is get a concussion for no reward. So I, I really didn't like the initial inclusion of the head contact rule because it meant loads of players. We saw a few of them. There was a couple that happened. There was one I remember going against. Uh, it went against uh, Jelanche. He had he had a, he got like yellow carded for one. And the guy literally ran at him. He picked the ball up from the back of a ruck and ran forwards and hadn't yet stood up. And he he tackled him round in like a seatbelt tackle, got him in the head. He got yellow carded. And I was like, well, what's he meant to do? He he, he ran into him with his head. There's not a lot you can do in uh, in that sort of instance. So, I don't know. Uh, the, the hip downwards thing, I think, is kind of dumb. Um, because I don't know how you... I don't know how you referee it anyway. Because what is it? It's like, is it like navel downwards now? But you've still got to go above knees. Otherwise, it's a chop tackle. You can't do that. So you've now got like two feet of room to tackle, which is tough anyway. But also, if you go low and you get your head in front of someone's knee, you'll knock yourself out. I don't know what it what it does. I think that actually it tells people that are bigger, run with your knees high. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing as when people jump in the air. You kick a ball high, you see them jump in the air. They don't. If you ever watch a player jump in the air to catch a ball, or if anyone's ever done like rugby training before, you'll you'll probably know. You'll see people jump in the air and they'll either stick a foot out or stick their knee outwards as they're catching the ball. So their knee's facing this way. That's not because, like, that's how people jump. No one jumps like that. You jump like that because if someone runs into you, you get to knee them in the head. (laughs) And you also spin upside down. You can claim you've got massive tackle in the air. It moves your centre of balance so that you flip over more. But you also, if someone jumps at you, you can just knee them in the side of the head. Rugby's a rough sport. People cheat. <laughs> it happens. We don't we don't claim that one. If someone else got kneed in there, there's a there's a you know there's a good chance of getting a concussion from that as well. So I, I think I I, th- I don't think it's very I don't think it'll work well. I haven't seen it implemented. If it if they implement it and it works fine, great. I just feel 80% of tackles will go against that rule. You'll, you'll end up with penalties just constantly and sort of ruin a game. Um, Wales versus Georgia was a great game. The look on their face. 
<laughs> well, I mean, yeah, yeah. Depends, depends on your standpoint for that one, Sam. Um, if you're Georgian, absolutely. I uh, I think there was a, a superb game in there for Georgia. Um, but yeah, uh, the the Georgia game was just was just disappointing. Just disappointing from a Wales standpoint that they. I don't know. I don't know. They were just so blasé about it. Like Georgia, Georgia will compete. Georgia don't stop. They are not used to being able to beat top level teams, so they they give it their all. They'll they'll come back if you give them the opportunity. Uh, Connor's asking, uh, how is going to win the Six National? I'm guessing that question is meant to be who will win the Six Nations, sort of in my opinion. Uh, there's a video on the channel, Connor, which you can go through all the predictions for all the matches if you want to, so you can get a better insight into why I think this. Uh, but I have called an Ireland Grand Slam. Uh, I think Ireland are, are up for this one. I think they're in the best position. It just comes down to me. It's the game between Ireland and France. Whoever wins that wins for me. Uh, it's a bit of a shame we get to see that game in the in the second week. I would kind of like that to be in the fifth week. I think that'd be quite fun to see that right at the end to sort of decide the uh, the Six Nations. Um, Jabberwocky says the tackle rule is daft. Not going to fix bad tackle technique. Yeah, I think it seems to be the consensus as well. I don't really know how that's happened. Um, just teach people how to tackle properly at a younger age. Yeah, well, I mean, tell me the, the I, I I learn how to tackle. You, you you're meant to put your hip. You're meant to get on the right side of someone's knees. You're meant to tackle shoulder into hip. Um, but uh, you know, the, I understand there are things that are more difficult though, which I don't think are taken into consideration when you learn it. I don't know your early teens. You know, to actually play, you know, rugby in a more competitive manner rather than like tag rugby, where you you know you're ripping the tags off. Whatever. In fact, let me sort that back down to four. As England are going to play at speed, I think, for this one, as is already happening. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can go out the left side here. George North, oh, doesn't manage to get there. Um, but when you consider people like, um, you know, Eben Etzebeth, how's, how's that man meant to get to, you know, Darcy that's Graham's hips? <laughs> like, that's no, that's no longer a case of, like, tackle technique. That's just logistics. The man is too big to perform a legal tackle on, on someone. I did remember going to see a. Um, it was a Wales Scotland game. I went up to uh, to Aberdeen. Aberdeen? No, what was it? Edinburgh. I'm just thinking of Scottish places now. Went up to uh, went up to Edinburgh to watch the. Um, oh, go on, boys, get out wide to watch a uh, a Wales Scotland game. And um, someone did uh, a tackle. Oh, I'm going to forget his name now. McGuigan. Someone got a tackle on McGuigan. And McGuigan's only... He's not a, a tall guy, is he? I'm sure in, like, normal circles. He's probably about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, or something. But he's... In rugby circles, he's not that tall. And I remember someone like Alan Wynne Jones tackled him. <laughs> and he, he got done for a high tackle, which was just, you know, a seatbelt tackle. And, uh, and I just sort of blurted out. I was like, about how like how unfair it is, because McGuigan's only about 5'5". Five five. You know, you you, it's impossible to do anything other than a high tackle. And literally, a circle of people around me, all in Scottish jerseys, just erupted into laughter. It's like, because everyone sort of knows it's a bit ridiculous. There's only so much you can do that's actual tackle technique. Oh, wow, we got away from this one here. I don't know what happened to the uh, the England fullback. We'll run this one over. Josh Adams. Nice try. I don't know what happened to the, uh, the fullback then. Did the fullback engage in the tackle? There he is. Oh, I actually got the tackle. Oh, there was the missed tackle by the prop there. Had to make the uh, the recovery tackle. Um, so, yeah, t tackle technique comes into it for the majority, but there are certain people that I, I do think will struggle with this new rule. I have no idea if you're massive, <laughs> how you're meant to tackle a short player. You might find, if rules like this begin to get implemented, you actually might find a swathe of, um, of shorter rugby players getting into teams. Because the shorter the rugby player, the harder it is for other people to tackle you legally. And depending on how they enforce the laws, you might find they suddenly start get every team's after their own version of Shane Williams, just to keep the uh, keep getting penalties for uh, for poor tackle technique. Oh, Josh Adams holding on. Oh, didn't mean to pick that up. Get it out there. Oh no, we're in desperate trouble here. They have to get the ball to the winger. Which way is he gonna go? Have you seen Sam Simmons do a nice little spin there? <laughs> Um, and he says, uh, you're right. Uh, if you run with your head down, your legs cannot be tackled. So yeah, and it's one of the things I saw. I saw a video uh, of some like grassroots um, England club. Uh, there was a coach talking. It was on like Sky News or something, and he was sort of talking about you know how the tackle affects things and how 
how is it going to be refereed and stuff. And he was pointing out that the big concern for him was that they're going to be teaching young players now. Um, you know, this that you've now got to tackle it. Um, oh, let's see if we can get through here. Okay, big kick on. Go on, damn it. Oh. <laughs> um, you've, they're now going to be teaching all these youngsters, you know, basically tackle at people's waist slash knees. And he was saying he's very worried about that the you know young teenagers and stuff are gonna take this on. How many how many times can you get hit in the head by a knee? How many concussions come that way before you end your career as a rugby player before it's even begun? You know, and I was like, oh actually, yeah, you sort of take that into consideration. A knee is a very hard thing to hit. For anyone who watched the um the rugby championship, oh Josh Adams away again. Josh Adams MVP in this game. Um Anyone who watched the Rugby Championship and saw what happened with Caleb Clark just knocking people out because <laughs> he's got mega, mega thighs, mega hip bones and knees. He's like he's built like a horse. Like He's just knocking people out by people trying to tackle him. I, I, I think there's a danger to it. I think you should be allowed to tackle, you know, at least chest downwards. Navel's a bit too low because at the minute it's like don't tackle shoulder upwards. But you should at least say... I don't know, mid chest or something, give people an opportunity, get in the ribs or something. I'd much rather hit someone's ribs than a knee. <laughs> but that's that's just me. What do I know? Um Joe Walkie, uh, enforcing their own bans, uh, such as Farrell. Yeah, I mean, well. I saw some weird discourse around that. I still don't grasp the concept of the if you can go on like a training course to be taught how to tackle. Imagine being a one hundred capped international <laughs> and going on a course to learn how to tackle and that that being a valid thing as if like you shouldn't even you shouldn't even get to this level if you if you don't know how to tackle properly uh they should go back to the drawing board with the rules we keep adding rules uh to work around super rules that don't work so rules are created uh to try and make other rules work yeah yeah there is there is a lot of different things that have been added in i've actually been a bit of a fan of the rugby 20 of the rugby 22 of the 50 22 rule that's what i'm trying to think of um i didn't think i was going to be um because i really thought it would mean like the the, the people that are getting 50 22s the people who are actually succeeding in getting that kick into touch um tend to be the better team I don't think you'll be seeing Namibia play New Zealand and Namibia landing a bunch of 50-22 kicks. It just won't happen. It, you know, they, they don't they won't have that opportunity. New Zealand are a better team. Players used to a higher tempo, better fitness, better positioning, better facilities to review how the other team plays and work out if a 50-22 would come. You know, they're, they're absolutely keyed up for it. And I was very worried when the 50-22 rule came in that it would mean better teams suddenly get loads of lineouts in their opponents' 22. But it's actually sort of phased into the international world quite well. You don't see a lot of them, and it does feel like quite a successful thing, you know, when they get them. So that, that hasn't been that bad for me. A couple of rules, that, yeah, that still need to be changed for me. The mauling thing, I still think, needs to change. I'm not a big fan of the way mauls work still. Um, I think there needs to be a rule around um, mauling when it's like your line out in the opponent's 22. Because that's, you know, much like this game, <laughs> it still seems to be impossible to stop or there doesn't seem to be enough ways to counteract it. You either have to somehow steal the ball in your own five meter line out. I'm getting absolutely destroyed in the scrum look at my players no one knows where to go gotta sort of sit in the middle here they go right that might have been the wrong call here i think he was uh, isolated oh get in there boys come on oh well one on one nothing oh terrible tackle what are you doing <laughs> it's just cut it just cut inside for no reason johnny may goes over for a try um what was i saying uh, what was i talking about then <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten already. Uh, oh, mauling. Mauling in the uh, in the lineout, yeah. So you either have to steal someone's lineout on your own five meter lineout, which knowing everyone's going for a maul, no one ever does. Lining up the conversion. And then once the people engage team. in a maul, if the maul collapses, it's like a penalty try, isn't it? If it begins to move forwards and the ball sort of doesn't pop out, you know, it's probably going to end up being a try. The team can drive over and score a try. They can 
take it right up to the line and just sort of break away and score a try. A scrum half can run off with the ball and score a try. You can pass it out wide, which your defensive line is desperate trouble from five on five across an entire pitch. Most likely going to be a try. It feels like it's a bit hard at the minute for the, the defence team to do a lot to really shut it down. I would really like there to be a, be a rule change of that you, you're you not allowed to engage in a mall in a five metre line out. Any line out in your own 22, there shouldn't be allowed to be malls. I, I, I would like that rule just to be getting rid of so that people have to play because at the minute it seems to be just a ridiculous thing. You know, if you have a look at, you can tell that the rules have been implementing that way as well because as someone who does a lot of betting, I enjoy doing a lot of betting on the uh, on the rugby as it comes along. And you, I've begun to notice a bit of a pattern now that if you uh, want to name name a try scorer before uh, a game kicks off, most of the time the best odds are on wingers. You know, obviously wingers score a massive amount of tries. But on every team now it goes winger, winger, and then the hooker as like the most likely to score because teams like Ireland, France, New Zealand, Australia... Every game, there's a there's a try from a, a rolling mall and the hooker goes over. And betting companies know this now, so now the odds are really low because they they know they'll probably score a try. So I would like to see that rule changed. There's a couple of others that probably need to be shifted along, but I would like them to, to shift up a few of them. Uh, you believe rugby is dying because of the rules? Yeah, um, well... I think there's... I think it's getting a bit too complicated. It's, it's becoming a hard sport to get into. It's something I'm noticing. I've, I've met a couple of people, especially when I was at like university and stuff, didn't really know a lot about rugby. I said, do you want to go down to the pub and watch a game? And he's, you know, taking my time and, you know, trying to explain it to them as the game's going on. And until you actually sit down to explain it to someone, why things are happening or what's going on. Oh, that's too far. Keep rolling, keep rolling. Oh, that's the game. <laughs> we got a win there. I was, uh, I was struggling there to keep on top of it. Um, again, lost my train of thought. I was, too, I was, I didn't expect to be winning that one so soon. Um, yeah, trying to explain it to people that, that maybe don't know as much about it, and you just want to get them involved with the sport. They, they've come down to the pub with you, you want to have a beer with them, want to chat about it, and you're trying to explain what happened here, what happened here. Oh, there's an offside. Who was offside? Oh, he was offside. I don't think he was offside. Oh, it was. It was three phases ago. That's what the TMO is looking at. It's so much like backwards looking now. It's. And it can get really complicated to explain to someone who doesn't know a lot about rugby. Um, and I think that makes it quite uninviting to new people. So in that regard, I sort of agree with you because you watch football. It's, you know, those players kicking it to each other, scoring that goal. Don't stab people with your boots or it's a yellow card. <laughs> if you get a yellow card, you have to get another one for anything to really happen. And sometimes there's penalties. Like, there's not, like, a bulk about it, is there? It's quite an easy sport to gather. You probably watch one game. You've probably seen every rule there is. Rugby, there's still rules I don't know and, and catch me out. There was only a couple of years ago when we first saw the... Um, someone had a yellow card and then there was a scrum. And they and I think it was Italy. And they had to lose another player in the scrum. They had to go down to, like, a six-man scrum. I was like, never heard of that rule. It's like, oh, yeah, that's been around since... The 1800s. I was like, oh, God, that's, that doesn't seem fair at all. That seems like a desperate way to uh, to just destroy people. Um, right, France versus Wales. How are we doing at the minute? What is the uh, the standings? My face is going to be in the way. Italy are winning the Six Nations. <laughs> I thought Bears Gamer said uh, it would be the challenge. Italy are apparently winning without anyone else's input on this one. What's going on? Ireland and Scotland have lost both of their games. Italy have won two of the three. Wow. Italy are showing off in this one. Um, Jabberwocky says they're still surprised they haven't banned caterpillar rucks outright. Yeah, the well, I mean, the, again, they, they added in a new rule uh, a little bit while ago about the box kicking, didn't they? You know, you only have five seconds to get a kick away, um, and and the rule just isn't applied at all. No one follows that rule. I I don't I don't understand the concept of it. Like, why why is that rule? Like, not allowed. You'll have a, a scrum half sat at the back of the scrum for eight, nine seconds. The referee says, use it. They sit there for another four or five seconds. Like, just blow it up. Why is the TMO's job not not to count in a ruck? They've had the ball for, you know, the referee has a lot to look at in a game. I fully understand the idea that a referee can't keep track of every ruck. Five seconds is it being used. But is that not what you have a TMO set of staff for? You can just ring down, oh, by the way, you know, penalty there. Didn't use it in five seconds. Time wasting. Keep the game sped up. Don't do this like nine players 
<laughs> trailing backwards for a box kick. I think you should I think you should be allowed one additional player on the back of a ruck to perform a box kick. If, as soon as you add a second man in, balls out. Anyone's game. Um remember if you tackle low, you get pinned as well for a grass cutter. <laughs> I like, that. I like that as a phrase. I don't think I've ever heard that phrase before. A grass cutter. Oh, get in there, boys. Oh, my God. All right, France, uh, France are up for this one, apparently. Cameron Rogie is uh, taking part, getting injured. Uh, Johan in the chat. Uh, hey, mate, uh, did you get Rogue Challenge 4 yet? What do you think, Johan? What do you think my answer is going to be here? No, unfortunately, I have not. I have not picked up. Still waiting. Been about eight months now. They've not put it on sale. I'm even checking sites like, um, like CD keys and stuff. Um, and... And they just don't have the game. No no one has that game on sale. I want to pick up Road Challenge 4 just because I want to play it. Just to see what it's like. Uh, but I, I, I just don't want to pay £40 for it. Uh, but now that we've got the uh, the mods, I've just seen you put another thing about playing the Six Nations. The reason we're able to play the Six Nations in Rugby 22 is because I am playing on a mod that has added in um, the South African teams, the uh, like the international side, the natural Springbok side, England team, Argentina team, the England club level teams, Six Nations tournament. There's a really cool mod. So we are playing on the modded version today, which feels like it's really completed uh, Ruby 22's work for them. <laughs> because people are awesome. Uh, and people that in like rugby gaming communities spend their own time to actually make stuff like this is, is superb. Um, oh, going for a little cheeky pass there out of Villiers. Oh, a little spin from Dupont. Let's see if we can recover this one. Yes, we can. Right. Fans look like they're set up really well, but George North can get it out wide. Josh Adams again, man. He's had a good tournament so far. Let's get that grubber kick on. Straight up chase between Josh Adams and the fullback. Good touch around there. We'll take a cheeky little line out, though. Um, uh, we saw a couple of grass cutters. Grass cutter tackles blown in the URC. Oh, really? Oh, I, I've, I've got to be honest. I have not caught up with... <laughs> Clip level for so long. I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing all these things. I do get a few comments in there on videos and stuff where um, something will happen in the, in the Six Nations that I won't be aware of. I'll mention it in like a in a match report video, and I, I will get three or four comments. People being like, "How oh, do you not remember this instance that happened at club level?" Ah, so, oh, okay, okay. I didn't watch that game. <laughs> didn't see that happen. I wish I had more time to watch club level games. I really I want to catch up with the um, I said before the Ospreys have won um, their their game they were playing and apparently that was you know probably the first Welsh team to knock out oh that's a bad line out um, I, and I saw all the celebration stuff afterwards but I was like I haven't actually seen the game or the highlights what a pass Entermac oh man huge break there Wales got to react to this one oh can we get over there yes we can okay Okay, we're under pressure here. Let's just let's just sort this out. There we go. Get it off, Josh. Nil nil. Half time. We'll take that one for now. Uh, is the mods only for PC? Yeah, unfortunately they are only for PC. To my knowledge, um, I don't even know how you would sort of mod on a on a console. Um, I've never really looked into it. To be fair, I don't know a lot about modding. I don't claim to have anything to do with this mod. Just other people are amazing and have done all the work, and I get to use it. Um, I'm only trying this because I'm not used to modding. I got the PC that I do the videos on now and the streaming. But I get it. Probably, uh, I don't know, it was a bit later than this year actually. It's probably, I'm probably about eight months in now to having a PC. Never tried the modding before. It's actually not ridiculously difficult. Um, it's a lot of uh, deleting files and just replacing them with new files. It's actually not ridiculously hard to do. Um, I'm sure there's some fun little tutorial videos and stuff you can find. But just getting a mod like this makes this game feel so much better. We got a line out there or a scrum? It's the first scrum of the match. We're going for the scrum. Okay. Minutes. The two front rows have to want to get at it. The commentary team has also suddenly scrum. kicked back in. <laughs> I haven't heard the commentary the team the for about three games. Okay, here we go, boys. Puts the ball in. Okay, go for some big plays here. Damn bigger, break away. Oh, didn't oh, get the loop. The Thomas the Williams there. Let's keep all. going. They've got oh, to work God. hard for the ball. France, a rapid right. Long range pass. And to North. And oh, what a steal. 
<laughs> well, Dan Bigger decided he'd uh, had enough of that one, apparently. Right to penalise that. Oh, such a pity, because up to then he was Lovely, keeping uh, within the law. Look at these dudes. They're going to take a three points. Outrageous. I am liking this though. That's something I've actually found since uh, downloading this mod. Teams doing. No, nope, sadly, it's not gone through. Ooh, uh, teams making decisions like that, going for the three points, a really good move. Oh look, it's this weird glitch where I don't know what the option is. <laughs> Could have used that in the video. Let's go for A. For the scrum. Here's a scrum somewhat. Okay, so France did have the opportunity there to take the lead. But they haven't made the most of it. Set. Set. In we go. Come on, boys. The ball's put in. Okay. The ball Let's is run with the scrum half for the scrum second. Half. Oh, damn Bigger decided to just oh, abandon me. Attention. The referee says that's a Don't rock. do that. Okay. Alan Wynne Jones is going to have to do a lot of work. Terrible offload again. Oh, he left in <laughs> clutching air. It's a rock. This Wales team is just ball not doing very possession. well for me in this game at all. Oh, I have to cut across to get over get for it. I don't think we could. Rock. Let's go for the interception. Oh, nearly. Gaps opening up out wide. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's all falling apart. Wait, it couldn't have been Dan Bigger. He's yellow carded. I've only just realised. Who, who ran away from my scrum? It completely ruined it. Oh man, not a lot of time left on the uh, the clock to make the most of it. Uh, yeah, the mods are fantastic, but unfortunately uh, I only play Rugby 22 and my other games on my Xbox console too. Yeah, I know, that's like, yeah, I, 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 I've played an Xbox my entire life. Um, like I said, I only got the PC eight months ago. Um, I still have a controller. <laughs> you won't be seeing me doing a whole lot of uh, stuff on the, uh, on the mouse and keyboard anytime soon. I'm very much a console gamer at heart. Oh, Thomas Williams is kicking off. Oh, Jesus. How much your, uh, your drop out? That's not bad, to be fair. We can work with that. Oh. The kick ball. pass for Falatau. Uh, no, I, I, I do actually miss doing a bit of, like... Because I have this now, because I have the PC and have the ability to play effectively any game, um, Wonderful you know, and they're cheaper. You get games on Steam. Um, I, I found myself spending a lot more time playing games on the PC, as long as, you know, I used to do videos for the for the games and stuff. I've got the second channel that just does gaming videos, which I haven't uploaded anything to for a while. I've got stuff done. <laughs> just need to find some time to sit down and edit it all. Um, oh, Tom Francis, good pickup. And then dropped it again. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, Scott Baldwin's in the Wales team, isn't he? <laughs> as he was coined by one of my friends as Scott Drop the Baldwin. <laughs> Because of how Players many times you to drop the ball, filling in for Dowie Lake. Um, but no, I, I do miss a lot of console gaming. I, I, it's not quite the same to sit in an office chair like this and play a game as opposed to being sat like on your sofa, chilling out and doing stuff. I do feel like that. There's some games coming out soon that I really want to play. Um, and I, I'm not going to get them. I haven't got any of the next-gen consoles now because there's just not enough games out for them. And I don't really want to spend the £500 to get them. Um, the Resident Evil 4 remake comes out pretty soon. Oh, go on, get out to Josh Adams. Oh, a slow pass. Um, so, I, I really want to get that. But again, Resident Evil 4 was such a fun game to just sit down on the sofa and, and scare yourself with. <laughs> but I, I'm going to have to get that on PC now. I got a different preset for this theme. What's the preset? I feel like I'm really struggling to make headway. No, it is annoying when you can't get like. Contact, oh, God, no, you suck, Dupont. Stay in ball. Stay in ball. Stay in, Zamit. How have we lost all of that? What on earth happened then? How did we? <laughs> we lost the turnover. He kicked it away. The ball somehow stayed in. Zamit got there first. Then we lost the ball again. What's going on, boys? Sort yourselves out. Terrible. Um. But yeah, um, what was I said about console gaming? Yeah, oh, and seven 0 first loss of the thing. The Grand Slam dream is over, guys. Where do we end up? Italy might be taking this one. <laughs> oh, France are up there on top now. Oh man, how do I come back? Do I come back at this point? Let's see what's been going on in the other games. So. 
Other teams are scoring high as well. Italy beat England by one point. Incredible. I lost that one. Ireland beat Scotland. I need England to beat France. I think I'm in trouble here, guys. That loss is going to screw me. France are on three from three. I need, I need someone to step up. I need someone to step up and help us out. <laughs> um... Uh, you get so irritated uh, when I play play this game with the robotic commentary. They could have made it a bit more creative. Like, if you, yeah, the the commentary of this game is is weird. Um, I did actually cut a section out of my big Lobby Twenty Two video about the commentary because it was really hard to make it make sense. But the commentary is there's there's clearly like there's clearly been lines read. <laughs> and then they've clearly found the most minimum number of lines they can read and then sort of it feels like they're stapled together um, I was watching a thing the other day with um, oh nice little breakthrough there okay what do I need? I need I need tries don't I I can't really afford to be messing about here right Adam Beard let's out wide again got any cool set plays I don't think any of them work um and it was talking about game game audio and stuff, and it was uh, Joe Rogan uh, talking about how the um, the commentary he did for the like the UFC games, and he said like he spent days and days and days in a recording booth, and they had to record lines for every move, every takedown, every chokehold, every armbar. He said everything had to be covered because there was so much money put into it. Like they wanted every that single bit of dialogue covered for um, for commentary reasons. Oh, he's got it out of the I was like, That's awesome. It sounds so good when you have like fluid commentary. But in this game, they do say really weird lines. You know, like the score. The score is one of the most obvious ones. Wow, Scotland have scored three points. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> why? Why can't you just get him to to say the lines in the same the same way? They're keeping the ball alive with all these offloads. No, bigger. What have you done? Watson. <laughs> there you are. Breakthrough by Watson. It's like it's just not. It, lines don't carry on from one another. Oh no, that move not working. Okay, we need to do some here, boys. Spend a little bit more time on that at training. There's not a great and deal of support. They are up so yeah. quickly. How do I um I keep forgetting this reset button? Okay, let's mix it up because they're clearly quickly. going for a hard press. The high ball. There we go. One back by Davies. And kicked clear by Davies. I think I'm back a bit. Oh, that's it's not going to work at all. Really well. I wonder if they're going to confuse the defense recover. with this move. We're in desperation mode now, boys. The Got the these offloads. A really good contest <laughs> it's like there. playing Fiji. Everyone's able to offload like an absolute freak. Come on, it. There we are. There's some good meters made. That's what we want to be seeing. Right, quick ball. Nice. We'll cut back inside. Now we're making numbers on this outside. And again. Oh, not again. Come on, boys. And again. Thomas Williams. Oh, he's completely isolated there. Get with him. Somehow we've got that one back. Yep. Yeah, nice little pop pass. That's what we wanted. Keep it going. George North. Big run. Oh, come on. Get with him. We go for the cross field. <laughs> Might be a little bit outside my range for this one. Oh, Falatau taking it to the line. It's nice. Keep going. Why? Tipper, get it out. Okay, we'll get one try. We'll get one try. <laughs> We're in the lead. That's at least <laughs> what we needed to be able to achieve here. Um, let's go back to the chat quickly. Uh, do you think that it was a right decision to bring back Gatland for the Welsh job, or would you have liked to see Scott Robertson uh, from the Crusaders to have taken the job? I, I think I think Warren Gatland was the right decision at the the time where it is. I think the, the short turnaround time between now and the World Cup um, gives itself to you suddenly need a very experienced coach with knowledge of the team, knowledge of the organisation, and sort it out. I was a bit surprised when they... Because he's, he's actually been sort of given the nod to go ahead for beyond the World Cup, which I thought was surprising. I thought they might have said, take the job until the World Cup and you'll get replaced. 
What I probably would have liked to have seen more would have been for someone else to be sort of noted as like, our main choice is enter person's name here. However, they're going to become like a co-coach with Warren Gatland. Uh, Warren Gatland's going to take them to the World Cup. And then after the World Cup, oh wow, good pickup by George North there. And then after the World Cup, Warren Gatland step back and then let this new person take over. And you get to have like someone slowly build into the role of of coach and they have the next four years to to sort of move on to the next World Cup. Um, and I feel like it could have just been managed nicer rather than just be given to Warren Gatland. You've been thrown in at the deep end. And if it doesn't go their way, you sort of tarnish a bit of a of an otherwise very good reputation um, over in Wales for him, unfortunately. Which I'm, re I'm really hoping he does well. I feel really bad. Can you imagine if they go into the Six Nations this year and they lose every game? <laughs> you know, what does that do for, for Warren Gatling coming back into this team? What do people do with that then? Who do you begin to blame at that point? Um, so I really hope it works out for him. I, I just wish there was a bit more of a longevity look at things. Like, they, you know, it doesn't really feel like they've come up with a plan. It's just, oh, it didn't work when we got rid of you. So someone else had a crack and now you're back. <laughs> do it again. Oh, zam it. Right on the wing. Reach. <laughs> Don't know about you guys. I think he was in touch. <laughs> but we'll take a try at that point. Let's have a little quick watch of that back again. You grab a drink already. I think he got tackled into touch here. Oh, he definitely was in touch. Outrageous call by the referee to not pick that one up. Um... What's your reaction to Eddie Jones' return to the Wallabies? Uh, very surprising. Um, not because, like, he doesn't deserve to be, like, managing, like, a Tier 1 nation or anything. Uh, but more, I, I felt it was a bit harsh. Um, I don't know his name. Against the, the, the coach that lost his job for Australia. Um, again, they looked at it as, like, a results thing. You know, like, oh, they, they didn't win many games last year. But they... They had, like, 40 players missing. <laughs> like, it's not that bad. They also nearly beat Ireland. They also lost, like, a handful of games by only a few points. They came back from a massive deficit against Wales to win a game. I really don't think Australia were doing very badly. It's just the, the final scores, when you look at them on a, p a piece of paper in a big list. Yeah, all right, maybe they didn't look the best, but it was certainly not the worst in the world. I, I'm surprised he got the job. I'm surprised he doesn't want to try his hand at at like a, at a team that, that I, I think would really gain a big advantage from having him. You know, that would really help a new team move on. Like a Fiji or a Georgia. One of those teams that's certainly in the tier 2 bracket but can't break into tier 1 at the minute. I would really like to see him take over a team like that where his impact into a team would actually make, you know, a big chunk of difference and would help a team and would help a jury. Going over to Australia, I'm sure he'll do well with Australia. He'll pick some good players over there now. Um, they'll go on. They'll have a good World Cup. Will they win the World Cup? It would be surprising uh, for them to win. Oh, hang on. What's happened here? Jonathan Davis with a little sidestep run. Still kicking on. Okay, we're going for it. Wild call. Here we go, boys. Crossfield. Oh, nearly. <laughs> Trying those fancy tries. Now, we've already won the game. They not, still have the advantage. not the worst thing. We didn't get our four tries for our bonus point, unfortunately. Um, are you going to any of the World Cup games? Managed to get some resales yesterday. Wow, Jack, that'd be awesome. And yeah, no, I, I will not be uh, attending any of the World Cup games. I have no idea what is the cost of doing <laughs> any game for the World Cup. That would be some mega money. But uh, yeah, you go, uh, you go enjoy. What do you know? What do you know? What games you've got tickets to, or have they done it as a you get you get a ticket and they tell you what game you'll be going to sort of deal as you get close to the time or is it you get to actually pick a game World Cups do all sorts of different things with uh, with ticket assignments um, 
Your one's asking, uh, so what went wrong with Wayne Pivak's attacking style with Wales? Because his attack was deadly at the Scots. Yeah, that was the thing people wanted to see from from Wales. Oh my God, we're down. Are we down to third? We just won a game. France lost one. France lost one, guys. Hang on. <laughs> Time to do maths. Hang on. I will get back to your question, Johan. I promise. Hang on. Let me just do some quick maths here. So we're on 13. France have played all their five games. The last game is between me and Ireland. I need a bonus point to win the Six Nations here. I'm going to struggle to do that in a five-minute match. Do we extend the time to like a ten-minute game so I have a chance to do it? I don't really know if you can score four tries in five minutes against on like legendary teams. Let's do it. Let's make it a bit more fun. Let's make it more interesting. We need the bonus point. You might see me go into some more concentration mode because I get a little bit competitive when it comes to stuff like this. Um... I'm going to up it to a 10 minute game. In fact, should we also do... Um, I, I wish you could do some different stuff. Let's do a... Uh, let's do a nighttime game. There we are. Make it, make it a bit more ambience in the thing. Uh, right, what was the question I was meant to go back to? Oh, the attack thing with, uh, with Wayne Perk. Yeah. Um, I think the thing for... The thing, when it was Gatland and um, Sean Edwards, as I sort of mentioned a bit earlier on, it was, it was a bit more of a case that Wales won games because, not because they were like slamming teams and like scoring an immense amount of points, but it was just the fact that they conceded less than they were scoring and they won so many games. Wayne Pivak coming in, I thought when he first got the job was meant to be, okay, Wales are now going to go from being this super defensive team where it's hard to score a lot of points against them to now, they're going to now on top of that, also be an incredibly attacking team. So they were going to go and have awesome attack and awesome defense. And it just didn't pan out that way because then Sean Edwards went, which no one was expecting. So they then lost their defense. So then you relied entirely on attack. So then what you were hoping for was that Wales were going to do a complete 180 to how they've ever played and become this team that maybe concedes a lot, but would score more. And that's how you were going to win games. And it just doesn't pan out that way. It's not, it, it doesn't seem to be the Wales style. Remember like a, a number of years back, Wales used to be so good on the this like scramble attack. As soon as a game got loose, it, it, it like opened up and you saw how good Wales used to be. That doesn't seem to be the thing anymore. As soon as the game breaks down from being very formulaic, Wales seem to be in desperate trouble. Uh, in so many games that I've seen, especially on defense, as soon as someone breaks the line in the Wales defense, it is like, you're just waiting for someone to score. Um, so they've really moved away from it. So I'm hoping by Warren Gatlin coming back, he actually sort of undoes a lot of that. There's nothing wrong with finding attacking players. And some of them have done very well. You know, like Reese Zamet, you know, sort of coming into the side. You know, big attacking threat. There's extra speed coming in now. There's there's all these sorts of things. Which is, it's positive moves. Good things are happening. But teams are better in defense. It... I don't know what it did by losing Sean Edwards. All it meant was that Wales were like, oh, we can score more points now. And then we sent the guy who does all the defensive work over to France. And France just said, well, you're not allowed to score anymore. So suddenly being good in attack doesn't mean anything. I don't think they uh, I don't think they planned it out very well at all. I quite, li I quite like a team that's very good at defence. Right, you here we go, guys. Bonus point on the line. Six nations on the line. The the Everything needs nations to happen in this game. With no less than um, 12 grand slams. They should add TMO into this game, like in Rugby Challenge. Oh, they have Rugby Challenge 4 has a TMO. That's great. That should absolutely be a thing. Even for decisions that, like, the game already knows it's going to happen. Just to make a TMO call. I would also like if there was a way to add into a game like a like a big tackle or something happened that you got an advantage for like a high tackle and you're allowed to play on with the advantage and at the end of the play a tmo brought it back to like an earlier injury it's like oh actually we've had a look back at that it wasn't just a bad tackle it was also a yellow card that could be fun oh, josh navini doesn't have a picture card in this i thought he did that's another thing i would change about this game why do they have the real people's faces on there if you don't have all of them just add in the game faces onto those cards. Fixed. Get rid of the cards. Just have people's names. Tell me what position they're playing in. Make it look better. 
Uh, Rennie had a 38% winning record. But yeah, exactly. That was the that was the thing. His the winning record is really bad. Like <laughs> you know, you win one in what, what just over one in three games. You know, it's it's not a good record. And from all the things we saw about you know Pivak being dropped and and Eddie Jones being dropped. This whole thing about, oh, you know, it's a results-based sport. You know, you need to be having those results to, to keep your job sort of deal. But they... But I, I just feel Australia's were more harsh. I don't feel like Australia deserved to lose a number of their games. They were so close. Um, and, you know, and just little things went wrong or teams just showed up for it in, in the right ways. The game against Ireland was really close. They should have beaten the All Blacks, but they did that, you know, um, time-wasting penalty. Oh, man, Ireland are all over this. <laughs> you might need longer than 10 minutes. Okay, Win Jones, here we go. This is going to be a real struggle. God. Okay, let's change this. I should have I should have done all this before we started. Uh, which preset? Go back to that one. Not working for us. Let's do it this way. Williams passes to Davies. They still control the ball oh, and can go find wide. Any room in this line here? The referee oh, signals and a the drop ball as well. That's not what we want to see. Let's see what they can do with it. The referee says that's a rough. Good passing. Oh, look at exactly. the energy, the dynamism oh, of it all. Like okay, the previous well, I'm going to have to do my thing again. For some reason today, guys, I have been struggling a little bit with the chat. Apologies if people are putting messages and I'm not replying okay, to them. The my chat on my back. end keeps randomly turning into just an Scrum empty black heart. square, <laughs> which I had to keep undoing. Um, but yeah, I feel like Australia got got a real a real hard sort of go of it. They could have they could have won so many more games. Don't know if he should have lost his job. I'm finding a couple of other players coming along. What's his uh, what's his name? Uh, now Nikita Wase and, and people are, like finding these lads, you know, from somewhere. I don't know where he came from, but brilliant addition to the uh, to the Australia team. I feel like Australia have done a lot of the hard graft this year to have a good World Cup. Eddie Jones will come in, just carry on the good work, and then he'll just take all the credit for it. Oh my god, I can't even get out my own 22 here. Ireland are all over me. Let's just take the penalty or don't, man. As long as there's an advantage referee. Thank you. <laughs> he gets back onto his feet to challenge it was like the ball. The two ball minutes of advantage. They still Outrageous. Have control of the ball. Oh, good charge There's down there by Josh created. Adams. Right, Turn we need to get on the ball. front foot here. We have been struggling in this game. A rock's formed. They've managed to keep possession of the ball. God, my players just seem yeah, so disorganised. Oh, look at the energy, the dynamic. Where is everyone? What's going on with my, my line here? It seems the defence aren't quite up into the Line faces just of the attack all as over much. The just a drop off in intensity, and they keep possession. Pass. Oh. Sexton with Mega the hand off. Okay. Made of titanium. Pick up the ball. I want the scrum. I need. I need room to open up. Uh, the attack went especially wrong with Pivak, uh, and he didn't expect that from a Scarlet Genius. Yeah. It just doesn't play the same way. I think maybe. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a lack of. Well, Expectation from the the step up from international from club maybe, maybe just slightly misguided. Maybe playing, you know, with a team in the Pro 14s. Um, you know, at that point was maybe it doesn't prepare you for the intensity that you get from so many of the other teams. Not playing enough teams of the uh, in the Six Nations and stuff. Right. Try number one. Try number one, guys. Three more. Three more. <laughs> We're coming back. We're coming for this. We're coming for this Six Nations. It's on the cards. They need a massive game. Three more. Quarter of the way through of the game. Three more. Three quarters left. It's all tallying up to be an 80-minute nail-biter. Okay. Taken by Navidi. Navidi okay, sends the ball high. Oh wow. Okay, we got some nice little teleportation Gibson. there. That's going to help us. Rock forms. What a turnover. That was a good turnover to be fair. We'll take that one. Okay. 
slightly adventurous to try and up and under from within your own 22. Now then, oh, this can is catch by Falatau as well. Okay, let's just drop at the back of this rock. someone back here. Interesting. He chooses to kick. And pick that right in the corner. Oh team. man, not quite in the right line of sight. So safe under right, the Liam Williams, come on. That's a oh, clever that's not the best pass attack. in the world. That's not what we wanted to Williams. see. We'll keep it going. Thomas Williams. <laughs> that was risky. Risky pass. Not going to do a lot there. They're moving the ball well. Okay. I mean, he must be isolated to there. Yes. Okay. The cool. Good. Go. And again. A rush formed. Where is my line? People are stood in such weird positions. This is not a defensive line. Get over to that left hand side. Yep, can see that one coming a mile off. There's not a great deal of support there. They're opting for a set move here, Ben. That's right, Nick. They're looking for some way to crack this defence. It's a run. Go on. What get a there, boys. Keep going along. Worked. Oh, the timing was just off. Keep going. Great platform to attack from here, from this ruck. Oh, come on. They pile into the ruck. Excellent okay, defense. We'll, we'll take it. Adam Beard's got a lot of work to do from there. Reese Zamet. <laughs> Man, it's all about just finger speed at this point in this game. Ireland on legend difficulty are tough, man. Okay, Adam Beard will pop pass again. Nice, nice that little looks like drink be there by Tom Francis. Get out wide. Navidi to Josh Adams, the man who's been saving us through most of this tournament here. Adams, absolutely critical okay. intervention let's by just, the defender. Uh, let's go through some he forwards here. Owens shrugs off the tackle. They took the ball in. And oh it's man, still their line is just suddenly crumbled down. George North. Oh no, George really North, what are you doing to me? And they managed to get the ball. Oh, look at the massive gap in that line oh, there. Wonderful offload. Opportunity out wide. Recovery tackle. Oh, by Zamet. The, tackle. the referee says that's a row. Oh, don't let him through. <laughs> They Get took in. the ball in, and it's still theirs. Palatau takes it out. Henderson Come on. After the tackle to Come on. Sixth. Hold the this defensive line. Real struggle. Ball still in their possession. Josh Adams, three on one here. Send it Great on little Henderson. cut inside defensively. Palatau's got to cover the outside now. That's a clever pass out of the tackle. My God, the offloads. There's the tackle. Here's the ruck being created. Oh, we get the turnover. Okay. Ooh. I've lost my chat again. Oh no. <laughs> Come back. I don't know what that weird glitch is where I keep losing my chat. Okay. Ken Owens. Out we go. Wynn Jones, not the man. Space I wanted to have the ball there. <laughs> There's not a great deal of support there. 500 meters of open room. Wynn Jones is the man that gets the ball as opposed to Reese Zamet. There's a big difference out there on the wing. My God. Oh, that was nice. He's tackled. They still control the ball and right, can go shift wide. Shift over, shift over, shift over. Oh, yep, I just go wide, go wide. Josh Adams, go, 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 go. Seems less Come on, boys. Okay, just pick it up, Josh. It takes it up to ground, it's fine. They've held on to the ball. We're moving in. We're moving in slowly. Ken Owens. Ken Owens! Oh, 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 like a missile. Wanted to come in, the new captain. Showing off to Brick. Gets over the line. We got our two. We got our two from the first half. We need another two more. Oh, man. Tough. <laughs> it's certainly tough. To uh, do. Do. Go. Let me get rid of it. A little bit. The weird bot reports that we've got going on here. Go to some of them. Uh, there we go. Oh wow, sorry guys, I missed a bunch of chat because my chat wasn't working properly. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I wonder if Gatland will be successful without Sean Edwards. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be tough. I think it's going to be a tough step up for him to um to to come back in. I really hope I hope it works out for him. I, I hope Wales have a good Six Nations just to. Settle down the team a little bit. The talent's there. The players are there. They just need to have a, an actual good good tournament. Uh, a week after the Wallabies almost beat the All Blacks with a time-wasting thing. They were hammered by the All Blacks in New Zealand. Yeah, true. But you've got to have those one good games. You can have, you can have good games and bad games. They, they, had, they had some good games along the way. They had a couple of good games against France as well. They're, they're competing is the thing, though. They're competing with the top teams in the world, and they're doing well. And then some games, they just get sledgehammered. 
Um, Keeps that same dragon. Uh, if you want to check out uh, that last video I commented earlier, I left a big comment in my opinion. Oh, so yes, I did see that, Kian. It was just I saw that about five minutes before I started streaming. Obviously, it was a big, a big comment. I will have a little bit of a read uh, back through it uh, when I have finished the stream today. Uh, uh, Snotty Bojangles, what a name! What an incredible name! Uh, hey, do you have much uh, Fantasy Six Nations content coming up? Uh, new to the channel uh well we'll be doing the um what we do is we have the the super brew league there's a video up on the channel you can join in the super brew league um i've never really done anything about like doing the picks or what i pick um i just sort of leave it up to everyone and sort of remind people to do their pick stuff and then on the monday uh after each weekend we go over um world rankings see what shifted up from the teams that have won and then afterwards we have a look at what's been going on you know and if it's if it's like the predictor series, it's just who won and who lost in what games. Obviously, the Six Nations is nice because there's only three teams, but we do go through the uh, the fantasy teams, uh, picking out like the players who scored the most and you know who would be some good picks for next week and stuff sort of deal or any injuries or yellow cards and stuff. So there's there's a bit of stuff like that. This normally comes out on the Monday video after we do the uh, the world ranking stuff. Um, Hansi says at least someone found a cut for you. I know all those all those hot singles in my area, isn't it? All set for the conversion. <laughs> Are they into rugby? <laughs> Alright, come on, bigger. Terrible kick. Never gonna work. It's kicked uh, that nearly went over. I completely it's messed it up. So We're not here for it doesn't matter about the conversions, guys. The conversions aren't important. So the it's the, the tries. Point. We need four tries. We're on to two. Yeah, it's a thing on YouTube, unfortunately. I think pretty much doing anything to do with streaming wise, uh, well, any streamer you ever find will have an immense amount of bots. It's why a lot of people have like uh, they have like their admin teams and stuff doing it. I never really know how people get into like admin stuff. Great I pass. doubt uh, I doubt the streams that I do draw that much attention for uh, for people to put in all their little bots and stuff, but there you are. <laughs> Never click on any of the links. That's what I always tend to just say to people. Don't click on links that are in the chat. Oh, damn it. Oh, superb little break from him there. Oh, we got to get in, get in, get in. Long pass, long pass out wide. And again, Jonathan, to win Jones. Go on, big boy. Fantastic. We're on to three. We're on to three, guys. We need one more. We need one more try to seal this out. I didn't even look up where Ireland were in the table. I have no idea if I've got a certain number of points that I need to suddenly do against these guys. One more try. Sorry for all the flashing as well. I did not know. this. It's probably because it's the modded version that's sort of on like a bit of a backwards patch. Uh, in by. Ring uh, there might be a couple of other little flashing and graphical issues. You know what? I'm kind of tempted to almost let him score a try so I don't have as far to run back up the field. But that's not the spirit of the game. Oh, we're getting a bit laggy as well now. Okay, Josh Adams. Go, 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 go. Wow, I've got real lag. <laughs> yeah. I saw that, that, uh, that catch up. Uh, I do think I just had a uh, a thing there. Hang on, oh, everything's breaking. Uh, oh, we've had a super chat from Kian. Oh, thank you very much, man. Thank you for uh, supporting the drag the the channel, the Mad Dragon community, everything else. That's very kind of you, man. Thank you so much. Five pound, massive round of applause for Kian. In there, I think you're the first donator ever to the streams as well, Keen. So thank you so much for that, man. Uh, looking forward to you taking part in the um, the the fantasy as well. It's going to be so much fun to uh, to get involved with. Where is my uh, game gone? I lost the thing. <laughs> the domination broke the, uh, the the game in, in one go. That actually might have been what goes all the lag. That's awesome. Thank you so much, man. That is uh, massively appreciated. Um, my plan is hopefully to to do things like oh, if, you know, obviously if, if people donate to the streams and stuff, um, uh, that we can basically build up like donation money. It all goes back into the channel because that's what I've always done. Anything I've ever made and it from doing YouTube things always goes back into the channel. But it just allows me to like oh, you know, cool people donate to the channel. Awesome. We'll buy a rugby game with the donations. And we'll play new rugby games and stuff. We'll have more to, uh, to chat about. I actually want to make sure that it actually uh, appeared on the stream. Because for whatever reason. There we go. There we go. There you go, Kian. I want to, I want to make sure you get the uh, the thing for that. I don't know if it actually appeared on the stream. I've had some weird technical issues today with the uh, with the chat. 
and with uh, with other things. So hopefully it did appear, hopefully it appeared that time for you guys if it didn't already, because well if people are willing to donate to the channel, then I absolutely want people to have full credit and have an animation and stuff play. It, need, it needs to be done correctly, guys. Right, we need one more try. We've got to do it for Kian now. we got to we got to show off. Come on, boys. Oh, don't just stand there. Who just stood there and just watched that happen? <laughs> Come on, boys. Get in. Get in, 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 in. Right, go, go, go. Tom Francis, a natural scrum half. A terrible pass. What a terrible... You know what? Have, have a score. Have a score. We need to get back at the other end of the field. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> We're getting up the other end. You celebrate now, Sexton. <laughs> you won't succeed by the end of it. Come on. Tom Francis, what are you doing here, boy? What's that? <laughs> I hope he has a better Six Nations than he did in that moment right there. Terrible. Now, uh, Johan says one more try. Yes, Johan, it's coming. It's coming, man. We've got to do it. We've got we've got 20 minutes left of the game. We can do it. Uh, Kia says, uh, no problem. You deserve it. Uh, also, I'm not the most uh, noticeable uh, noticeable about rugby. Well, good luck. Uh, can I help with my... It's, oh, knowledge. I guess it's mean like sort of knowledge about the rugby. Uh, but look, can, can help my guesses. Hopefully, either way, I enjoy learning about rugby and your channel is a fun way to learn. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the for the donation, man. I'm so glad you enjoy the channel as a, as a way to learn. That's what the channel is about. I've never claimed to be this guy that's going to like tell people what to think about rugby or how to think. I've always wanted the channel to feel like, uh, you know, just, just a mate. <laughs> that's what I've always wanted it to be. A thing people can just jump on with, chat to a guy who talks a bit about rugby, like you're going down to the, uh, the pub with your mate. It's Josh Adams! It's going to seal it for us. And, uh, and get to learn a little bit, get to talk about a sport I enjoy, play games with people that enjoy these sort of games. That's what I want it to be. I want it to be a genuine like community of people who just enjoy it. That's why you'll probably notice we don't have a lot of people that really stick around that are like super negative or just super nasty. I get quite a few comments that are quite like weird. <laughs> people aren't always the happiest with me. Um, but they, they never come back to the channel. I've had people before tell me I'm unsubscribing. I don't like what you said about this. And great. Cool. I don't want those people. <laughs> people that enjoy the channel and, and want to do these sort of things. That's what I absolutely love. It makes it so much more exciting. But yeah, you uh, you don't need to know a lot about the the rugby man. Get in, pick pick some fun stuff. So when we did the uh, the the rugby championship last year, uh, Alex won the rugby championship last year, and she does not know a lot about rugby. Uh, she's she's been learning a little bit of rugby through watching the channel and listening to me talk about stuff. Um, and she said that she picked a lot of names based on the names she liked, basically like horse racing. <laughs> she she genuinely picked out people. She liked Caleb Clark because she th she kept calling him Clarky, and she was like, "Oh, this guy's cool." She liked the name Boffelli because she never heard Boffelli before. Turns out Boffelli, best kicker in the championship. <laughs> she won the fantasy by just picking people with names that she liked and and That's just putting them in position. Come. So you don't need to know a lot. You can show people like me up who claim to know quite a bit. <laughs> by apparently That's picking people with the good names. That's one of the fun things about the fantasy as well. It's because it's so... It depends like on the players, uh, you know, and how they perform that day. Owens. It can be so nice to... Uh, the the, you Owens. can sometimes be completely wrong. Sometimes you pick an outside captain who just gets that game absolutely right. You know, and it's so nice to see that the, uh, you get, like, double points from nowhere. Tactical decision-making. So much fun, man. Really enjoy it. I think you'll have a good laugh with it. And especially if you have a good week and get, like, mentioned in a video and stuff. I know that's always fun for people. Oh, get in there, which is why I like trying to, like, include people's names and stuff and show everyone on the on the videos and stuff. Because if people don't watch the channel and don't watch the videos and don't take part in the in the fantasy and stuff, the channel doesn't do very well. And it doesn't become a lot of fun then if you just, if you just sat there, like, talking to yourself or doing videos just for yourself. So I think you should always try and give stuff back to people, like, you know, Apply, like, add a fantasy stuff in, make videos about people playing the fantasy stuff. You should always like show people back. Oh, I'm gonna have to run this, aren't I? I was gonna dot it down, but suddenly the room opened up and Josh Adams went into touch. Josh Adams just decided, no, no, you know what, Mad Dragon, no, don't do that. <laughs> I had a safe little niche there that I could have just dotted the ball down, had a nice little drop out. No, I decided to be clever about it. Oh, look at the energy. Shouldn't have done. Oh, no. Oh, dear God. Oh, good cover tackle, Liam Williams. Defensive line's gone. Absolutely gone. Tipperick's going to do everything for that one. Superb job. Justin Tipperick, man. What was that? How did he get across to stop that try? Still holding out. Big hit again. No! 
This is going to be a real It'll take struggle. down there as well. And suddenly the breakaway is on. Josh Adams, hoof it downfield. Can we get a fifth try? Does it open up? Do we see? Playing with the advantage. He says, maybe. Johan says try. Absolutely. Absolutely, Johan. The try is there. We are getting it well there. Um, uh, your, your donations disrupted the game in every way. Absolutely. Hey, we don't mind. I just didn't know what was happening. <laughs> the channel doesn't get a lot of donations, to be fair. I, I it, It's a very niche area of YouTube. I know people are out there that... They'll do a stream and they'll make, you know, 5,000, you know, pounds a stream from, from donation stuff. Uh, rugby and rugby games is very niche. <laughs> There's not a lot of people that are donating channels like this. So I, it's the first donation I think we've ever had on a live stream. So everything's new to me on this end when stuff like that happens. But it's so nice to uh, to have that. Um, oh, no. Come on, boys. Hold it out. No, I do have a big appreciation of people you know, taking the time and doing stuff. It's like pe people are signing up on the Patreon as well. That's awesome. I mean, I love the fact that people are doing that. I always try and give stuff back to those guys as well because I think people really believe that like YouTube like pays a lot of money. It does not pay a lot of money. Believe me. <laughs> it is a uh, it is a long haul of a of a thing. You do not earn a lot of money unless you're up there with the big guys. I have no idea what like. Squid rugby no, or you know, two cents rugby work. might oh, you know earn like per month sort of deal through through revenue and stuff. I've no idea. The um, Here's the rug but being created. It, it certainly can't be enough for me to like get like a monthly what wage a by any means. Um, He's taken to the ground now. I think he has to the I was able to buy this game on PC <laughs> through my revenue on uh, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> from from CD keys for cheap. To keep of the <laughs> so you don't uh, you don't really earn the the big bucks. So when people do do like donations and and Patreon stuff, it is a, it is an enormous chunk of like what you can make up on a channel. It is really good for smaller channels especially. I think if you're on like two million subscribers, it's probably a bit of a drop in the ocean. But for small YouTubers, man, it it is a real way to help out. He's more YouTube gap, isn't it? Actually making this financially viable. Oh, that's a oh good tackle there. I don't know why I'm still playing on. I've definitely won this game. I don't know why I'm still going. <laughs> I just really wanted to try and get another try. Go on, Dan. It's through there. I still can't believe I haven't made any ground. I'm struggling. There's so many tackles. They've held on to the ball. Adams tries to okay. gain ground. Making it a bit more the interesting. There we go. There's the tackle. Here's the ruck being created. Three people in that ruck. Go on there. Go on, kick it back to me. And get rid of this off the field. Around. The tackle made, but the ball kept alive. Okay, this isn't going well. <laughs> I haven't made a single substitution either. Francis. For this whole tournament, I don't think. Gibson Park, who gives it Oh, to I tried to run an interception line. Interceptions oh, are really that. hard to pick off in this game. It feels really hard to actually like specifically target one to attack from here from I did used rock. to really like it in rugby 20 the way you could just run in There's line with the ball created. and pick off an interception he gets and back I feel like Josh Adams could have got that one for the ball. you're going Gibson down the right Martin wing look at him going throw. up the blind side and what are you doing there to keep the ball alive despite the tackle Aki knocks back Aki Anyone hear the commentary team then? <laughs> what were we saying before about clunky commentary? Bundyaki just knocked back Bundyaki. How does that work? They still have control of the ball. Knocked back himself. Who gives it to Thank you. This is going to be a real. My God, I waited for that ball for so long. The defensive effort that that took. Get it off, Liam. Let's take that game. Let's take it home. Exactly. Let me, uh, I lost my chat again. <laughs> I don't know why that keeps happening. I have to keep clicking off the thing in order to get it to pop back up. Oh, man. What a big game. What a big game. Let's see if my maths was correct on this. I'm going to look real dumb if it wasn't. Don't know. Don't know the answer to the question. We did it, guys. We managed to get that Six Nations. Not a Grand Slam. Not a Grand Slam because France did come out of the woodwork to uh, to do some damage. Oh, can I not go back in and see? Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have gone back in and and seen what the uh, what the final table was. Uh, oh, I can't go back in and see. That's a shame. But we finished on 21 points. Oh, no. Sorry. That's points against. What did we get? Four. We won four. So we got 16 points. And we also got one bonus point. 
Man, you bonus one of six nations on 17 points. That's pretty good going. <laughs> I don't don't know if I would have done that before. I wanted to know where Italy finished. Italy were competing for like second place in that one. That was quite fun. Um no, uh, I only realized it said uh, noticeable while you read it. Yeah, that's how, that's how it happens. Your brain your brain thinks one thing, your fingers type out something else. Um Hansi says, uh, I love the way that people always want to say they are unsubscribing and then still hang around. Just unsubscribe and have off. <laughs> well, I had, I had one guy. It was uh, it was the video that I did that came out. Let's hop back. Let's hop back. We'll play some more games in a second. My, uh, my, my fingers and my eyes are struggling to, to keep up to date with everything. Yeah, the video that, that got that comment, that very specific one, was about the Eddie Jones getting sacked from England. Um... And I said about how Eddie Jones had had quite a good career, you know, in, in terms of coaching, of course, what he did with Japan. Um, and I said, like, a, a passive line in it, like, um, and I believe, you know, he was involved with the Australian team as well in his past. I, I don't know a lot about coaching staff. I've learned more since doing the channel. Um, I didn't realise he was, you know, mega involved with the Australian team that... that um, was against England in the World Cup, um, and, and, and the guy the guy left a comment saying something like, uh, "Like the fact you don't know Eddie Jones was instrumental in that World Cup in the coaching staff shows your sheer ignorance." Um, and and I can't stand it, and I'm unsubscribing. I was like, I, I don't. I think that guy doesn't realise I was eight. <laughs> in that World Cup, no, you're, what you're basically saying is my uh, my sheer ignorance and not knowing international rugby coaching staff at the age of eight. Uh, yeah, all right. It's like you're unsubscribing. Great, cool. Go away. <laughs> I never get it. Uh, I've just seen your answer asking about the. Uh, oh, sorry, I haven't got it on the uh, the right screen. So well, let me talk back to the other one. Uh, that's the uh, the Springboks team there. Oh, I've lost the uh, the chat on here. That's fun. I get that back up. Oh, okay. We don't have chat on the screen apparently, but that is the uh, that is the Springbox kit in the um, in this game in the uh, in the mod. I wonder why I don't have chat on the screen. It's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean, Hansi. It it is a weird thing. I don't know why people leave weird negative things. The the amount of comments I wasn't really expecting it because I didn't think. Me as a person and the channel and the content that I do is not overly like uh, uh, like diversive. It's not like nothing's antagonistic. There's a couple of like opinion based things. That's what the channel is. It's me. I'm giving my opinion on stuff. But like I never like come in and say like this team is bad and this team is good or I support this team and they're the best. I don't do a lot of that. Like, I get quite a few comments from people saying like, like, I've had comments in the past where someone will put in the comments how I'm really biased towards one team. And, like, so my commentary on the subject matter is really bad. And in the same video, have a comment saying, it's because you're unbiased or it's because you hate this team. So one says I'm biased towards them, like Ireland. I did the, the one for Ireland last year. Doing the Six Nations prediction, I predicted Ireland to win last year's Six Nations. And I had a comment saying, you're like, you're so biased towards Ireland. It's not even fun watching your content, unsubscribing. And further down, I had someone saying something like, the way you talk about Ireland shows how you hate them all. And you, you're begr begrudgingly saying Ireland will win. I was like, how do two people get the exact opposite view <laughs> in the same video? I have no idea. People are weird. People leave weird comments. You just sort of have to get used to it. The video I put up today, um, if anyone is subscribed to Connor Does Rugby, uh, he, he left a comment in saying that he... His predictions for the Six Nations were um, the exact same as my predictions um, in terms of the the final table. And uh, someone someone left a comment on his uh, on his channel saying uh, you need to change your name to Connor Does Drugs <laughs> because of like how outlandish it was that it could end like this. I was like, what? What do you mean? You can't do that. <laughs> like he's just. He's just telling you what he thinks will happen. Like, it's not a bad thing. Just, just like, chill out. <laughs> People get way too wrapped up into into stuff. You do see it as well as if you ever talk about, like, people's teams. There are some teams that really dislike it. The the ones I've had the most, uh, which, of course, is not all all fans from, from one team. 
The one I've had the most has been uh, New Zealand supporters. Uh, bringing up anything negative about New Zealand is is opens the door to a wave of people being real angry with you. Um, I remember when it was leading up to the rugby championship, I, I mentioned how they, they lost, you know, to Ireland and they lost to France. I had loads of comments. People were not happy. Oh, you hate New Zealand because you haven't to point out their flaws. Like, so I'm not doing any of that. I'm just saying this happened. It's a fact. You can go look at the game. Like, it's not a thing. Like, I think they'll bounce back. I think New Zealand are a great team, but you hate them because you pointed out they lost a game. They lost a game. Every team loses a game occasionally. It's like, you don't need to, to always be in there, but there you go. Uh, Kia says, uh, Squarespace is definitely paying Squid Rugby uh, a lot, but he does shout it out in every video. Yeah, I think when you get sponsors, I've had a couple of people reach out for sponsorships. I always get a bit suspicious because the channel is just the size it is. Um, it's it's not the biggest channel. I'm always surprised if you want it. And then if you ever look up the companies, um, I, I've never really been like, I don't really necessarily want to affiliate with a company that I don't know is like very, very straight. I've got a, very, a lot of cool ideas of how I want to incorporate sponsorships into the videos. I've got some real fun ideas, um, but no one's ever reached out. I also think if I was ever going to do a sponsorship, it would have to be for something that like I actually think people would want. Like I'd really love it if someone reached out to do like, uh, like deals with like rugby jerseys or a way to get rugby tickets for cheaper or you know rugby branding or sorry if there was a way to like implement that or a company wanted to reach out and do that i'd absolutely be up for that i've had a lot of sites that ask me because it's a sport i've had a lot of people reach out to me who run like gambling sites and i'm like i don't want people that watch me to be like oh he's gonna try and get us all to do gambling i was like no 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 i want things that like if I was going to get sponsored by a channel, I want uh, sponsored by a company. I want it to be something that I can use. And if I was watching someone do what I do, I'd be like, "Cool, he can get me a discount on that thing. That sounds great. I want to do that." So I've never done sponsorship stuff, but yeah, I think uh, I think you know, big big bucks get thrown around when you have, especially Squid Rugby, the view rates and stuff. Most of the videos get you know six figure views, five figure views. Uh, I think I think you you get some some big money for that sort of stuff. Uh, Ansi says, uh, if you have 2,000 subscribers and you get £5,000, that's some... Uh, what? If you get around £5,000, that is some of what I worked out from someone's channel one day. Uh, yeah, believe me, you don't get anywhere near. <laughs> um, anyway, that's sort of much. The, the view count's incredible. The, the, the best way I can sort of work out as like a generic thing for you would say... You probably earn one pound every time you get 1,000 views. Not like in totality, not like you've got 200 views on one video, 200 views on another video, and it adds up. If a video hits 1,000 views, you get one pound. If you get 2,000 views, you get two pounds sort of deal. That's before what YouTube takes. That's before uh, like the tax you pay. It's income. You have to pay tax on that. So, like, of that pound you get per thousand views, you probably get, like, I don't know, 40, 50p of that. You know, and when you put that into context of a channel like mine, average view count on my channel is, you know, 500 views. Some of those videos probably don't earn any money, uh, and they might build up over time. Um, the style of channel that I have is also not very indicative for sort of, for sort of money thing. No, there's not a lot of videos of mine that a lot of people go back to. Which, if you ever look at the, the top people on YouTube, is people that play games. Any You can watch a game anytime. You can go back to do stuff. Um, so you can you can go back and watch those people's videos whenever you want. New people can find the game sort of deal. No one's really going back to watch my preview video from a game that happened two years back. So once the, the video hits X amount of views before the game... That video is effectively then dead. It, it goes into the past and, and no one goes back and looks at them. So it's also not really the best sort of channel for generating money. I don't think this is the right sort of channel you'd want to get into. If you're looking for like, this will make me a millionaire. No, rugby is not your answer, <laughs> fortunately. But it's the thing you enjoy. And I don't think you should make a channel if it's not about the thing you enjoy anyway. Um, do you use uh, Xbox on your PC for your games? Uh, says Johan. I assume you mean the the controller. I have a controller. Uh, yeah, for for most of the PC games, I did buy. If you're ever considering getting a PC and you class yourself as a console gamer, 
and you're like, man, I don't really know how to switch over to this. I have this thing. I'm going to see if I can get it in front of the camera. Not sponsored. <laughs> but if they want to sponsor me, great. I have this thing. Can't really reach because there's a wire. I'll sort of hold it sideways. Uh, it's called a Razer Tartarus V2. Uh, and it's a cool little thing that if you're someone like me, you're not very used to, like, uh, you it has your hand on. Trying to get a good view of it on the camera. Not really very easy. And you have all your buttons here. You can remap all these controls to be keyboard controls. So you treat it like a keyboard. But it also has on this side an analog stick that you can move around. So when you're playing a game, you can move around like you're playing on an analog stick. It's just that you've got a bunch more keys there. Um, and that's been great. That's been great for me. Um, I know a couple of people that play on PC hate these things. So it, it's your own thing. Got a bit of dust like flying around there. This thing. Oh, it's a fly. What sort of watch that flies it by my face? Um, so yeah, if you if you ever consider getting into PC, I'd absolutely um, I would absolutely recommend getting uh, getting one of them. Uh, Hans here, you should sponsor this girl. Yeah, I know. Hey, someone's working hard. I, I I I love the concept that it's not a bot and genuinely a person whose job it is to go around live stream just to sponsor something. That'd be great. <laughs> what? A, how hard would that person work? Right, let's go back over to the game. Um, but yeah, the uh, the South African team. I can't remember who was asking. I think uh, someone was asking about the. Uh, was it Johan was asking about the, the South African? Yeah, the Springboks team's been good. Ninety two rated, uh, pretty high. I think it's done off a later patch from further back. So it's probably when South Africa were were top of the world when the patch came. Uh, this uh, mod came out. Sorry, but yeah, fully fully licensed team. Um, some good stats in there. So yeah, really nice. Yeah, if you if you can have this game on PC and you want to do some modding, that's awesome. Right now, Bears Gamer did say earlier on about. Um, about trying to do the Six Nations with Italy. <laughs> and I kind of like that idea. I feel like it might be uh, might be intense. What I might do actually, I'm going to put the let me put the game time down. Rainy day. I just want to be down to pro as well. I just want to see how uh, how Italy handle in this game. Going up against Wales, tough first game. Uh, uh, not two thousand. Uh, we're getting two hundred thousand. Yes, yes, it does say 200,000. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's on two lines in the chat for me. So I just realized, oh, it's 200 plus some zeros, like 2,000-ish, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you, yeah, if you get, I, I, yeah, I think the, the, the value system is, is kind of hard to judge about, like, money from, from channels and stuff. I think if you're in, it's just a snowball effect. The more subscribers you have, the more views you have, the more money you get. That is just how it works. One minutes. Only a few more One minute. Terrible go. commentary. Um, the, I'm also not sure how it works. I've had videos before where they did. I had one video they did really well um, in a very short amount of time. Uh, that was a match report. Um, was it from the rugby championship? It's on the channel. Uh, it, it was. It was a match report about New Zealand because I, I the, the thumbnail for it was two try Talia, uh, and Mark Talia got two tries. That video in like one day exploded to like four thousand views. It was like one of the better match reports I've ever had on the channel, and that generated like like a good amount. That was like you know it got up to like six seven pound in like one day and I was like whoa what's going on here this this video is blown up but then I've had videos that have got higher onto like 10,000 views and they didn't earn as much they only earned like three pound I don't understand how less views also doesn't always equal more money or less like less views equals yes less views equals more money sometimes I don't really know the YouTube system I don't know enough about it um, if you ever consider doing a channel do it because it's fun. Look at the defense from one touch <laughs> never, to the other. Never do it for money because you will never make enough money <laughs> for it to, uh, to be a thing, unless you find a real niche. Um, and even if you find a niche and you, or, you know, or something that's not very well done, you will, you will find there is someone else who probably already does that thing and does it uh, to a bigger audience. I do remember trying, I tried my hand again, that's the thing. It, it was a hobby for me initially before it became a rugby channel. 
and I just tried some different things out uh, just to see what I enjoyed, what would what would be a, a fun little hobby for me to take on. Don't let him get through here, boys. Come on, Italy. Terrible tackle. Absolutely terrible. Uh, <laughs> so I tried my hand at doing, um, uh, like, film reviews. I was like, oh, I'll do... Um, I'll do the... I'll start doing a film review. That'd be fun. I watched a film with my girlfriend, and it was uh, it was terrible. It was an awful film. I was like, I want to do a film review about this, because this, this film sucks. But I'll try and make it funny. I'll try and make it lighthearted. It'll be like a review video, but taking the video very, but taking the film very seriously. It was like a, it's like a sort of half attempt at like a comedy horror. But I'll treat it like it's a like a real film. I was trying to make it funny. I was trying to make it interesting. Um, that took a lot of work. Took a lot of effort to do. Um, and it got quite a few views. It is the most disliked video ever on my channel. <laughs> um, but it, it seems to be really divisive because, again, with films, people either like films or they don't like films. So if you say this film was bad, 50% of people who watched it agree with you it was bad. 50% of people who watched it thought it was actually really good. Uh, and what you found out is that the, the like to dislike ratio ended up being about 50% because that's what people think. <laughs> uh, but the comments you got were wild. People were really mad at me for like like being mean to this this film and stuff um i had a couple of comments um man, how did that come back to him on, off the post there uh, i had a couple of people saying um like i've clearly tried to just copy um cinema sins i was like no I, like no all i've 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 it's nothing like cinema since i quite like cinema since like it's oh what a line from david cc um it's nothing like cinema sins at all it's a film plot review and as i was going through it i was treating the film like it was a real film and then pointing out the ludicrousy of like you can't kill someone and chuck him in the back of a car in the middle of broaddale i was like just sort of going along and making a little commentary but talking about the storyline as it goes like I didn't, you know, all the only thing that coincided was I was pointing out flaws in the in the film, but because Cinema Sins, the biggest probably film channel on YouTube, already does that sort of thing, you just get branded as you're copying them, like you suck, don't do that. It's like, oh my god, this is a proper hostile environment to get into. No idea how people do videos about that, and it seems to be a bit of a thing. I've seen other people's like analytics for film reviews and stuff, like fifty percent. They're all about fifty percent. People either enjoy the film you're reviewing or they don't like it. And you've got to be on one side of the fence or the other. <laughs> Real harsh to get involved with. That's the thing I like about rugby. There's enough people who are smart enough to be analytical about rugby. Even if you support a team, you can still say, my team that I support is probably going to lose this game. You know, and, and there's enough people out there who are smart enough to do that and have the ability to sort of self-reflect. But... <laughs> some some other areas on YouTube I think can be really toxic if you get into them. That's a great pass. Oh, there's there's so much work to be done here. There's another try. I'm very glad I swapped this down to pro because Italy are going to struggle apparently to do this. Um, views are also about uh, people watching till the end as you get penalised if someone drops off uh, or skipping parts. The guy I used to play uh, in my son's band as a guitarist had one video explode to 1.7 million views. My God. I can't even imagine <laughs> what that would be like. That would be insane. I, I don't even know. I think the biggest video I have on the channel is about 40,000 views, uh, which is insane. Like, that's insane amounts of, of people have seen that video. Um, I can't even imagine getting to, to a million. I don't think rugby videos do ever get to a million I, don't, I would be very doubtful squidge rugby's videos have ever got to a million maybe like a world cup final video or something um it just doesn't have the the draw or something oh can we get out there can we see 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 Zanon. keep it going boys keep it going out to you Arnie. come on come on come on come on come on come on oh you've got the legs for this you Arnie. come on you've got the legs for this we're holding it together. We're holding it together, boys. Um, yeah, the... Yeah, the... I don't know. I don't know in terms of, like, view generation. It's also kind of weird that different videos get different views. I don't really understand enough about the YouTube algorithm to play it all and stuff. And I don't really, like, 
mind that much. Um, but I have seen videos before where, like, I'll make a video, just passively. Someone will make a video three or four days after me. It'll have almost the identical title and will have almost the identical content. And they will get five times the amount of views as me. Uh, and their channel can be smaller than mine. And I have no idea what caused what caused it. Um, so it, it, it's all it's all its own thing. I'm sure if you really look hard enough, oh, Minazzi, on some weaving here. If you look into it and want to pay like a YouTube an analyst or something to sort of go through it all, you can probably find sneaky ways around it. But yeah, I, I don't ever don't ever get into YouTube for the money, <laughs> unless you've uh, already got your your sponsors and stuff lined up. I don't think. And not see running it back up the line. Oh no! Terrible pass there. Shouldn't have gone for the kick. Let's see if we can hold this out here. What are we on? 14 all. Kind of would be happy with a draw at this point, to be honest. Oh god. Good tackle from Yuani. Holding it out. Oh, we went for the chop tackle. They're going to take three, aren't they? They're going to do it to me. <laughs> Oh, he's gone for the scrum. Oh, I've got a yellow card, though. Damn. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to have a hell of a scrum. Who did I lose in the scrum? Right, I've got all my forwards. I don't know what the commentators are on about. No one's even got the ball. Come on, Italy. Williams puts in the ball. Come on, Italy. Oh, the scrum's gone down under real pressure from the opposition. The ball is in the hands of the scrum half. Oh, my God. How <laughs> do you not get that ball out? Okay, okay, boys. No. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> We're in trouble here, boys. Let's, you know what? Let's just take it. We'll, let's just take it. Fine. <laughs> Why are they cheering? It's a draw. To be fair, <laughs> Wales would have taken that last year. Why is it? In, why, why? Why are my players sad? It's fourteen all. I'm fine with this. Uh, what are we going to say? Biggest pay for YouTubers are ads and sponsors. Yeah, uh, I think I think the sponsorship will come into that a lot more. Um, that game does that game get treated as a loss because we drew? It can't do. Matches drawn. No, I still, I still have one match drawn. It's because the the little circle down at the bottom is red. It doesn't look very good. <laughs> okay, England are flying away at the minute. Two from two. Tricky to uh, to come back from. Uh, As he says, uh, not many old diehard rugby supporters like me on YouTube. Yeah, it is. It is a thing. It's been quite fun to check out the analytics of the channel. To be fair, there are. Like, a weirdly large demographic of people that are, like, 65 and over that watch my channel. I found that great, because I didn't even know there, there was a demographic on YouTube for, like, 65 and over. Um, but I think I think it's a, it's a tricky it's a tricky vein to, to get into. It, it, the, the world of YouTube is, is a difficult thing anyway in terms of trying to, trying to sort out your channel and where you want it to be. My channel is... It's quite a youthful in the fact that it, you know, like there's there's rugby video games, and it's just me. A lot of people think I'm quite young. I'm not really that young. I'm 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 nearing in on thirty. <laughs> a lot of people think I'm quite young, um, but they, but I, I think there's oh good interception by Brex there. Um, but obviously, a lot of people have quite you know specific views about rugby or teams or things. A lot of the people that watch my channel are actually older than me. And if I give an opinion about rugby, they're happy to tell me I'm wrong. Um, oh, you aren't in the corner. Beautiful. Um, trying to draw new audience in, like you said, there's probably not a... Um, it, there's probably not a great deal of people on, on YouTube that are, are looking for rugby content for one. If they are looking for rugby content, YouTube is very big at being like, have you looked at Squid Rugby? Or... Two cents rugby, or the and those videos get pushed, you know, again and again and again. 
It's very hard to find a channel like mine unless you happen to look for something very specific. I doubt a lot of the, you know, I don't know. I don't know, so what age bracket to say? 40 and over, maybe? Are really looking for, like, rugby video games anyway? A lot of these streams probably won't appear for that sort of stuff. Um, which is which is a shame, because you end up losing a, a, a bit of an audience. I reckon I, I reckon I could really sit down and, and really, like, make my channel in a way that would be purely about growth and, um, you know, more subscribers and, and trying to do that. I could do that, but I don't want to change the way I do rugby, uh, do like rugby videos and stuff. I just like filming what I want to film, and it does come across apparently, because I've I've heard a couple of comments from different people have said I really like your style of just being like super laid back, super chilled out, just like literally like talking to like a mate about rugby, and that's I, I like that rather than needing to stay up to date on all the latest you know, news and information. Well, I mean, like, the amount of work that someone like They're Two Cents Rugby puts in. Driving I don't even know how he finds out, like, half the stuff he finds out. I see I see videos from, like, YouTube Recommended. When you run a, a YouTube channel, <laughs> it pushes the same types of videos. It's like, who's the, the tallest player of every team? It's like, oh my god, how much effort did that take to go and find all that information out? <laughs> like, I don't want to do that. I just want to, I just want to play video games. That's a clever pass out of the tackle. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Stain. Can't get that out wide. You've got to be able to get that one back. There's got to be room down this left wing, though, for Negri. Got no stamina. Oh, isolated. Riccioni. Oh, lovely sidestep. Still going. A little pop pass to Zanon. Take that under the post for a beautiful try. Um... Nancy, uh, you're just shy of 60, hey? Well, fair play to you for, for getting yourself on a YouTube live stream in the chat and stuff. Because, like, I don't know, it's... it's Like, around that sort of age, it's like... Me and my friends have, like, parents that age. Like, they ain't, they ain't sitting there down in a, in a live stream, getting in the comments, in the chats, and watching someone play video games. <laughs> it just doesn't happen. Oh, the crossbar. Trying to set up new phones and stuff for people can be can be tricky enough when uh, when people are up in those sorts of ages. So fair play to you, Hansi, for being around for this. Oh man. No, I am trying to find some new ways to do some different content and stuff. I'm looking forward to some videos that are coming out next week. Um, I really want to incorporate the rugby gaming back into the channel a little bit more. I do enjoy doing the. Oh, good tackle there. Um, I do want to bring it back in a little bit because I enjoy doing the, the rugby coverage and stuff. That's, it's something I've always sort of done on the channel, like the rugby previews and stuff. The match reports are fun, um, but they are actual work, uh, which I, I think is quite hard to, to sort of like do it off because, oh, it's your hobby. You know, nothing's work if it's your hobby. The, the match reports are actual work. You have to take down notes. I'm making graphics for the videos as the, the game is being played. Um, the game finishes. I have to run downstairs <laughs> into my into my little filming studio. I'm filming a video. I've got to get it edited. I have to get it uploaded before the next game. Like the Six Nations, you only have like a half hour break in between one game ending and the next game starting. Match reports are, you know, I don't know, 15 minutes long. They take 20 minutes to film. They take 20 minutes to edit. You've got to rush. You've got to get it all done. You've got to make a thumbnail. You've got to get a thumbnail up. Got to get it up. And it's like, well, but you could just not do it straight away. But if I don't do it straight away on a channel with 2,000 subscribers, nobody sees my video because someone like Two Cents Rugby, who's much bigger, makes a video an hour later. Um, and YouTube says, if you ever search, oh, I want to search for what happened in the, the England-Scotland game. An hour after that game is over, the only video that will be put up is the Guinness Six Nations, like, official highlights or, uh, like, two cents, you know, thoughts on the game sort of deal. So as a smaller YouTuber, you get really sidelined. You only have a very narrow window to get your video seen. So you have to put actual work into, as opposed to this, which is fun. <laughs> I'm just playing a video game and chatting to people. So it, it, there's different levels of stuff, but I am, I'm looking forward to next week. I've got some, uh, some rugby gaming being incorporated back in. If a new rugby game comes out... Leading towards the World Cup, definitely going to be doing a lot of that on the channel, uh, trying to showcase a bit of that sort of stuff. 
Um, because I, I really enjoy getting to this. I really hope one day we do get a, a really good rugby game. Ooh, I get taken down. <laughs> Into the corner. Uh, you love it uh, as you play yourself. You play yourself at like near in 60. Awesome, man. What position do you play? Not or is it you play the game? <laughs> Just thought there's two, two, two ways to, uh, to go about that. Do you mean play rugby or you... Uh, I love to buy more there. Or you uh, you play Rugby 22 or different video of rugby games. It's all sorts of things. Um, Mark with two cents is pretty good uh, and puts a lot of work in, although there is no graphics. It's simplicity and actually what makes it good as he can... Uh, and what makes it good as he can motivate his comments. Uh, not sure what you mean by, by motivate the comments. Um, but yeah, the two cents again has got to absolutely nail down. Um, in terms of the way to do it, because there, there is, a, there is, it's always efficiency. It, it, if you look at YouTube like, uh, like a business, like, oh, you are, he's got some speed. Good tackle, great tackle from Stuart Hogg. Um, if you treat YouTube a bit like a business, um, and you, you know, you're thinking about how, how do I make the most money? How do I make my channel grow? How do I get seen more and stuff? Efficiency of speed of getting the videos up is um, is is a really big thing, and he's got it nailed down to a T. Um, right, I'm not going to get to the four tries. Let's 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 take that there. We'll take a nice little win there over over Scotland. 15 nils fine with me. Um, but like you know, he has his his whiteboard and stuff to jot down on. Great, that's super simple. That's a, such a good idea. But if someone else did the same thing and did a whiteboard and drew stuff, I bet that person would get a ton of comments saying you're just copying him. You're not as good. Da -da 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 -da. So it's like, oh, you've got to find something a bit different to do, and you've also got to separate yourself. Because why would someone watch you if you just do the same thing as someone else that's already very good at what they do you know so you've got to find something different my way around that was i'll make cool graphics the graphics have changed if you've been with the channel for a long time the graphics used to be i used to do a timeline of try penalty injury and and do them all sort of deal. way too much work way too hard the graphics i use now much simpler two sections score who scored each try and in what minute so much easier made my life so much easier it's about efficiency and about doing things better um, but again, YouTube again prioritizes different things like the um, the video upload stuff. Notice loads, notice loads with the video uploads because this channel's bigger and draws more of an audience. There's a whole thing you can get into with the metrics, which I looked into of um, how your video is processed and rendered out. Um, and if you draw in more views and more people, they actually have different processing things. Or if you get a lot of views versus if you don't, and one is faster than the other. So if a game of rugby finishes, France Italy, France Italy finishes, both me and Mark over at Two Cents, we both rush into our rooms, we film a video. He doesn't edit his videos, he because he's very good at <laughs> just sitting down and, and saying it all, upload it great. I'm not as good at that. I have to sit down, I have to chop out all the bits where I get people's names wrong and stuff, so I have to edit it all. My my length of time to make a video is longer anyway. But I can sometimes be where I can be uploading a video when I press upload. His video is already live and has been live for like five, 10 minutes. My video will take two hours to process on YouTube because it doesn't draw in as much of an audience. Well, guess what? By the time my video gets uploaded, everyone's already watched his video and he's the bigger one. So now if you go in the search bar and type in France versus Italy, that video is at the top. Mine's down here. So uh, YouTube, again, is it's such a hard thing. You get punished over and over and over again. You have to be really on the ball <laughs> to do stuff. Uh, but it's just it's just territory, you know, of what comes with the territory of doing YouTube. You won't be seen for, for a great majority of it. It's really hard to grow as a small YouTuber. And once you get bigger, you always get bigger. You snowball upwards. But the starting bit's the hardest bit. But it is a lot of fun as long as you do a channel about something you enjoy. Um... Uh, game now, lol. Uh, used to uh, be a prop, loose, loose or tight head prop. That's tough. That's that's full Andrew Porter stuff right there. <laughs> you can swap positions. I wouldn't know how to swap positions. Um, no, I used to I used to play scrum half, so you probably hated me. <laughs> I was the one that uh, when you did a scrum and did all the work, I'd come up and give you a high five at the end of it and celebrate as a team we did it together. <laughs> he gets back onto his feet to challenge for the ball. Oh, there's a nice little run there already from it's Julian Marchand. Or is it Cyril Bay actually? Running through the middle there. I'm already in desperate possession. trouble. My God. The tackle. the tackle made, but the ball kept alive. Come on, boys. 
Hold it together. Hold it together. No. There's a gap in the oh. the <laughs> There's the tackle. Here's the rock being oh, created. Oh, God. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, no. Well, you should have either grabbed the ball or done something with it. Stats, facts, background information on stuff. You know, I don't have access to that stuff. I've seen it as well with, like, um, the Squid Rugby. Squid Rugby's got a lot of uh, connections with, like, the BBC and stuff. So there's, you know, when he watches videos and stuff, he has he has shots of the game from different camera angles that were never on live TV because he's, he's he's got people over there that give him stuff. So yeah, once you get in the know and you have all those other things, um, yeah, you've got if you back it up with stats and stuff, it's, it does make it kind of hard to uh, you know to point out anything that he says is wrong. I do also have a bit of weird backlash from that as well, which is quite funny because um, obviously, like when a game of rugby is on. Um, Trying to like get stats from a game. If you've uh, if you ever watched the, uh, the match report videos that I do, um, it, it can be quite hard when a, when a game is uh, live to to get stats and what they do. So the only method I have is to you know, look up online, try and find like a live stat tracker, um, and something shift. And I've had a couple of games before where I've given some stats at the end. Oh yeah, territory was. Yep. Fifty percent, but better. possession well, was forty percent. You know, you know, what a what a big shift for them. Uh, and I will have a comment saying a uh, from struggle. someone saying, "Oh, two cents said the possession was forty-five percent." Where do you get your bad information from? Oh, well, my bad information was the live Sky broadcast who put it up on the TV in the UK. <laughs> like, I can't do much more. <laughs> but because he said a different stat and he's so well known for his uh, for his accuracy in, in stuff, people just say, oh, you're wrong. Well, I'm not wrong. Just, that's just the information I have. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's wrong. <laughs> but he's so well known for having stats and stuff to back him up. Yeah, I get, I get called out with stuff like that quite a lot. Um, years ago, I used to write for an online rugby site, uh, but everything had to be approved by an editor first, uh, and he was not always there. So a match report would only come up five days later. He did it. Oh wow, yeah, that's a that's a lengthy thing. And again, uh, and it's something you probably notice yourself. Then, if you've done uh, you know articles and stuff, or if you anything to do with uh, with with online stuff, especially. Is how many people are looking up what happened five days later? Do people really, you know, it's 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 big news for a few days, and then it's not, and then it just gets forgotten, which is, uh, which is a tough thing to do. Okay, right. I desperately need to score something here because I've been struggling. <laughs> I've got in-depth talk. No. <laughs> what are my Italian team doing? Still in their possession. You're gonna kick this out, aren't you? Oh no, they're playing on. Fair play to them. A great deal of support there. It's fair to say that move came off, Ben. You're right, Nick. So very well done. Oh my god. Oh my god. Look at this ball. Bounce out. Bounce out. How does that happen? What a kick! I've turned the difficulty down. It's got more difficult. Look at this ridiculous kick. Entermac dodged one, handed off a second one, booted the ball downfield. It's got all the momentum in the world behind it. And then just stops. <laughs> Philly Air got to it. Outrageous. Outrageous. Uh, so you stopped uh, a year later as it was all news by the time they published. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly that. And then people think you're behind on it or you're not doing, you know, the job correctly and stuff. You know, that's got to suck. Five days is a long time as well. Unless it's unless it's like a really big deal, you know, the actual um, the actual victory is, you know, like I say, like an Italy beating Wales. You know, that'll probably be spoken about for a little bit longer. But like, we need support. Hearing that Fiji beat, beat Georgia, I doubt a lot of people are really looking that up, you know, five days later sort of deal, in which case you, your article sort of just takes a massive hit, which is a real shame. The defense seems less okay, Brex, come on, Brex. There's a ruck being created. Come on. Turnover, turnover for the defense. I can't win a ruck. He's taken Italy to the are now he has to struggling the at this point. The ball's kept alive. Rock. No, not quite. This no, time it doesn't do that work. Oh, it was worth a try, Nick. 
There's Come on, boys, we can do there. this. Not get in, get in. There we go. That's what we wanted. Right we'll pop pass out to Brex. Yes, hit the gap. He gets through. He took good advantage of the gap. They keep the ball. Okay. What are we looking at here? Okay, they're all shifting that way. Let's try going the other way. How have they got a three-man overlap? <laughs> Didn't they so lose Rob, everyone to the other to the side ground. of the pitch? How does that work? He offloads the ball oh, out of the great interception. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I've just lost, I've lost my dude. I've lost my dude. Here we go, Mori. Got to do it all yourself, boy. Another superb tackle. Villiers having the game of his life. <laughs> uh, Vivara's coming. How are you doing, man? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're uh, having a good time getting excited for the Six Nations. We are currently attempting to do the Six Nations with Italy. It's not going well. Oh, we've actually done okay. We, we, we drew against Wales. We, we're not having a very good game against... God. Entomac just real struggle. pans everyone off constantly. Very far up wide there. That is a great cover tackle by my Italian dude. Come on, boys. Get in there. Come on. Who, who's getting the ball? Vilemzi takes it on the outside. And now to the kicking game. This might be my worst loss ever in this game. So safe <laughs> under the high ball. I can see it going. Minotti's got to do something. Out to Negri. Where's my winger? Give me my winger. Stop giving me all these flankers out on the wing for no reason. He's totally done his defender. Oh, that's a great tackle. He gets back onto his feet. Uh, and challenge for keep the going. Ball. To Zanon. Stain. And that's the end of normal time in this match. Oh, God, Villiers again. Just incredible. He gives the ball. That's a clever pass. So much for Van der Fleer. <laughs> Get Villiers, Player of the Year award. What a sight! Been incredible in this game. Okay, Yuani. Oh my goodness. Just isolated. Everyone is ice. How can everyone be isolated? Somebody must have support. Zanon. Keeps it going. Come on, we've got to get one try. Lamaro can't get through either. And they keep possession. It's a ruck. Who else? Who else is going to tackle me? Villiers, once again. Oh, go on, Brex. Good pick up. Oh my god, my line is so flat. Backs are lining up so much more steep. What's my other set? Let's try that. Let's see if that switches it up a bit. The ball's moved on. Excellent handling. Yeah, They're missed, work missed the pass. The ball. I think we're in desperate. Oh no, we're in trouble here. Burgled. Yep. Well taken. We'll take it. <laughs> the tackle made, but the ball kept alive. It's a ruck. The attacking team go keeps wide. the ball. wide. Please Shot go passing. wide. Just go wide. <laughs> He pushes back the tackle. What has happened in this game? Thank God for that. Get it off the park. What a terrible game. I've lost to France twice now. In both games. Or in both like tournaments we've done. Thanks, Nick. How is that possible? That terrible. Absolutely terrible. Shouldn't have been the way to, uh, to do things. Uh, I've lost my chat again. Bring my chat back up. I don't know what that's been today with the whole chat thing disappearing. Hope that fixes itself. Oh, right. How are we doing with Italy? We're currently third. Currently third. England seem to be stealing this one. When do we, we're playing England next. They've had their three. We've had our three. Oh, okay, and everyone's about to go back up. So, if we can beat England, we might pull ourselves back up into this one a little bit. We'll see how we get on. We need to change this off a rainy day, don't I? It's too dark. Too dark to see. All right, let's see how... Oh, God. Let's see how we fare against England, he says, as they miss the first catch. Manages to get the offload away. The ball's being moved around. Okay. Let's play strategically. Let's just get that off the field. In touch. Nice. Nice and easy. Now here's the first A little bit of extra out. ground made. We'll make the most of that. Wow, they've oh, got a really a small line-out thing. Okay, Lamaro. Up and under. 
Now then, this is good. Legri takes it on a little bit further. Well, nope. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And suddenly the defensive line is non existent again. With the Great defender. tackle by Brex. Ref, Marchers. touch please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you have to go, Avara? No worries, man. Thank you for uh, stopping by, saying hi. Everything supports the stream. So you just pop in for a, uh, for a little for bit. Well, let's go for a little bit of a dummy jumper here. Oh, throwing Great it down. Throw Let's see if we can just get a little Rock. couple of pop passes away. Well, no, we can't. Right, let me talk about my line. Well, I feel lane. like I'm a little bit too flat at the minute. Get it out wide. Recycled. Oh, out of contact. Great tackle. Who was that? Jack Noel on the wing. The yeah, I'm going to cover this left side. Yep, saw that coming. No, nope, you don't the go that way. Formed. The defense had him well and truly covered. Young comes oh, through with ben a Young. stiff arm. Well, they put Ben Turn Young's on to start as well. He sends the ball high for Yoni, a nice and under. little up and under. That's got another drop ball again. I've been really struggling with these uh, these drop balls. Handling not been great from the Italian team so far. And now for the first scrum of the match. Scrum on halfway. Okay, let's see how we go. Nil, nil. Oh, that's terrible commentary. Looks like nil, nil. <laughs> No human being talks like that. John, how are you doing, John? Hope you're doing uh, well this evening, my man. This game looks like actual rugby sevens. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it is 15s, but uh, I can know what you mean by the fact of how uh, how loose and the amount of offloads yeah, that happen in this game. Oh, my God. Marcus Smith carving is open. Got to get back to that cover tackle. That was good. Not see. Right. Drop this back. Man, we're struggling. Italy here. Uh, Struggling in this game so far. Oh, look at Can't the get the ball the off the pitch either. The ball's passed. Ryan. That's a decent kick. No, no, we won't get it into touch, so it's no longer a decent kick. That's fine. We'll take the ground. We'll take the meters at this point. It's more important about getting the win here. We may even try and avoid the tries. If we can get some three pointers along the way, it might actually be a, a different technique here. Let's see if we can. From here, from this rock. Rex. Okay, we've got a bit of room out on the wing here. Okay, Jack Knoll's going to come across. I'll kick it back inside. I hope Rex has got the speed not as much as Mac Maitland's though. Okay. Oh, ball's dropping deep. Wow, what a kick. Superb. Right. Nutsy. Still got room on this wing. Sketty. Trying to get it out wide, man. There's so much room. The ball is kicked clear. That's a decent... Bounce potentially. No. Oh, good to charge down. Big pressure. There's a rock being or to the defensive line, the just ball. not there. What will they do with this? They're going to clear it. They're going to try and play on. They're going to try and play on. We'll make the most of this if they want to just play it on. They're not going to hear complaints from me. Stiff arm, fend, march. Right, we've got two people there. Come on, get with him. No. Oh no, that move. Poor Marcus Smith, <laughs> standing still. Dangerous move. Okay. Um, oh man, get in, get in, trapped in the corner here. A little pop pass again. Nope. He gets back onto his feet to try and make it down there. Uh, Joe says this is a sign of things to come. <laughs> I think I think Italy will be pretty happy with this nil nil at half time. And they keep possession. Oh, got him down. Keep going, keep going. Get with him. Okay, Enrico Mari. Look at this, plenty of space out wide. Oh, he's tried to chuck it back inside. They're playing wildly the now, England. <laughs> a ruts formed. Man, I'm actually in range here for a drop goal if I can get a turnover. Well. They're scrapping for the ball. No one's, no one's with me. There's okay. not a great deal of support there. Yes, they. England looking a little bit lost at this moment. Now they're just trying to work out where he to go. And he still oh, manages now they're playing to little the set plays just to contact. add salt into the wound. Oh, has Italy get a turnover? Big opportunity. And he's oh. missed it. So the score stays. <laughs> nil, nil. A poorly executed drop. Wow, look at the win. Really okay, we're not seeing. Oh, lovely little grub kick. And again. Kick. No, can't They're go again. For the ball. They've held on to the ball. Okay, here we go. Crossfield kick. Zanon sends the ball back the other way. Marches. Where's all my place? The the <laughs> they didn't fancy it. They didn't fancy the crossfield kick. Rock. Apparently, I'm I'm outperforming the rest of my team tackle. here. In they go to the ruck. Come on, get in. Stolen. There are 12 people in that ruck. No one's going to be very helpful. 
Dan on to Lamaro. The There's not a great deal of support keep the there. Support with him for still now. in their possession, and the attack leads to a ruck. We're gonna win that one as well. Struggling in these ruck contacts at this point. The Excellent offload. Player Stam is going to be dropping. Okay, hang on. He's taken to the ground. Now he has to go Going backwards the ball. here, boys. This isn't what we want. Okay, we've got some numbers. The chassis, draw him in. Stain, pop it off. This is going to be a real struggle. And they've kept possession at the back of this ruck. And a ruck is formed. My God, England blitz defence is crazy. <laughs> they've held on to the ball. I can't go anywhere. I can't, I've just played nine phases and just got stuck. They're moving the ball well. Right, Mori, go. Oh my god. Back onto dying. His All the players the are dying. Fitness is gone. Wet weather's taking its pressure on them. Successful offload out of the tackle. Come on, boys. Attacking team keeps the ball. Even Varney ball. goes to ground as well. Oh, we've got a the turnover there. No, we're gonna have to kick this off the field, I think. Need replacements. Oh do we? Yes we do, what am I doing? Picked out on the overlap. Mm, they still oh my god. Go All my players have no stamina here. We've got to rush off the line. There's a good tackle there to be fair from Stephen Varney. Needed to happen. Really sharp thinking good. for that pass. And again. And again. Very Hold effective. out the wing. I don't trust this wing at all. Yep, so that's one coming. Oh look at okay. the energy, the dynamism of it all. We went for a little cheeky it's chip over the top. Really well. They keep okay. The ball. Oh, that's a kick. We'll take this off. You know what? I'm having it. <laughs> nil nil at half time. Why not? Let's that's take it as a mini it's victory. It. Look at my player's stamina. My God, everyone's dying. Uh, let's try and get some some new boys on here. I don't think I did a single substitution the first run, <laughs> and now I feel like I have to just to keep my players alive. Uh, let's take off Garbisi. Put on Carlo Canna. Uh, the, the fullback's actually doing okay. Can Minotti play wing as well in this game? No, he's a dedicated fullback. That's annoying. Uh, Callum Braley, get on. Why not? We'll go back big subs. Big subs Jones. time. Oh, England have made subs too. And the kick -off to mark the start Let's of the see if the uh, the boys from the bench can make a big deal in this game. And we just need anything. <laughs> Any score the is happy. General opting for a full line out. So they'll keep the ball. Okay. Can it takes the it in. They took the ball in and it's still so there. So slow to get into their line. Zanon. Sarelli out to Yuani. Here we go. Stick with the ball. He's there to challenge for yes, the ball. we got there. We got there. That's the one we wanted. Absolutely. We finally, we finally found the chink in the armour on that left wing. My goodness. What an effort. What an effort to get there. Going out wide. Jack Knoll caught a little bit outside where he needed to be. The fullback did get across. Wind didn't help us, to be fair. The wind blew it back inside, but good catch by Iwani to score the try. Right. Now this kick for the extra two points. Carlo Canna. Hopefully he can get this one over pretty easily. We'll take this one. And he adds the two points. There we go. Seven. Okay. We've just got to hold out now. So the game has changed <laughs> from desperately trying to score to just hold on to the lead for the second. The ball soaring. The high ball. Oh, good catch again by Callum Braley. The the chip and goes is apparently being a thing. Apparently, it's getting somewhere. Oh, caught out of position. Why is why have I got another flanker on the wing? What is this thing about Italy putting flankers on the wing? Stop it! <laughs> Give me a winger on the wing. <laughs> Taking me down, guys. We gotta to work together. It's a hard enough challenge without you guys actually directly impacting me negatively. Oh, and the bounce. Yeah, England are not in position to return some of these kicks. Wonder if they we can get this right into the corner. Dip, 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 dip. Oh, a bit too much. Nearly, nearly got that five meter driving line there. Uh, Yuani, about the best player on the field for Italy. Yep. <laughs> Maybe in real life, but certainly in this game, uh, Yuani is Quick head and shoulders. Day. Unfortunately, uh, Capuzzo is is not in the team, uh, which is a real shame. Because I'd love to know what his stats score. are. I'm not sure if there's... Again, it's the problem with Ruby 22. There's not enough ways to, like, interlink 
different areas of the game. I think he might actually be in the game in uh, a club level. But there's no way to like move him into the international team to try and make it feel a bit more a bit more realistic, which is a real shame. Callum Braley, nice run to Carlo Canna. Go yourself. Come on. Good bounce. Now then, this is good oh, attacking ball. Devastating. To keep possession of the ball. He's going for a drop goal. Doesn't get there. Brutza. Changes direction. Smashing his way through. Got in my team of the. I wonder if Frederico Rutz will get into any of my team of the weeks the over the Six Nations. He got into about three of them possession. last year. Excellent. Iwani. Iwani. Less effective out wide. Oh. Oh. Dead ball. They defended the that. Minute, Just put the ball down. <laughs> He went for hope and glory. He went for the swan dive. Just put the ball down. <laughs> he did all the hard work. There's a rock being created. Oh dear. Itoje piles in to get the ball for his team. Okay, boys, look at my light. What are you all doing? They're just in a ball. Oh, you can't see it. it's behind my face. <laughs> Very skillful handling. In they go Come on, to the Carl, Take us home. Not long now, just a few one last to go. They still set have piece. Come on, Put this one down. They go on the training field. They'll try to gain ground. They'll take it. Kick. Seven nil. Let's just let's you just have it. To the end of the match, and no question who deserved the win. I think their coach is going to be immensely uh, proud of his team's performance. Non stop That's says it. Georgia is top six. Uh, top six in what? <laughs> I don't know what that means. They are top six in people's hearts for wanting them to do well in the in the rugby. That's where they are. Oh man, let's see where that puts us with the schedules and standings here. Uh, we're still third. We are still third. In fact, we're joint third with Ireland. But the points difference is saving us. They've got one game in hand. Oh, it's versus us. <laughs> I was like, oh, they've got one game in hand. Okay, so if we beat them, we definitely come third. If we beat Ireland by 45 points, we come second. Doesn't sound likely. <laughs> um, if we get the bonus points, if we get the bonus points once again, ladies and gentlemen, we could get second here. You know what? Let's do it. Let's 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 increase the the time length to ten to at least give me a chance. Let's go to daytime, uh, and I'll probably make this one the final game of the evening to see if we can get second place in the in the Six Nations. I don't think we're gonna get there. Um, Anzias, yes, uh, have you played the double tap? Have you played the double tap to get a return pass? Uh, it works pretty well if there is space. The double tap to get. A return pass, as in, like double tapping the actual pass button one way, and they like interlink loop. Do you mean, or I'm not sure what you mean. If there's a secret mechanic that I've never been privy to, I want to know it. Me in the commentary box <laughs> this evening, Ben K. Evening, Ben. There's a good crowd in here, ready to enjoy this pool round match. Good oh evening. man, absolutely. Oh, they've People decided to go in the purple kit. It's kind of weird. I'll give it a go. I'll try this double tap thing. See what happens. Oh man, I probably should have actually looked at my uh, my set plays and stuff as well. Right, Garbisi. Let's put them under some pressure right from the start. Let's try and put that right on that touch line. Great catch. That was not easy. It's a pretty solid start. That's about as good as I could hope for from there, to be honest. First throw in for the hooker. Okay. No doubt they'll know exactly where I'm going. Well, oh, here's the so. king of the lineouts right now. Over the top. Here we go. Big up and under from Garbisi. Oh well, and Garbisi just stopped running. Could have been a try. Could have been a try already. And Garbisi just stopped running. Challenge for the ball. Great clearance. That's a superb clearance. Gibson Park finds touch. Okay. Quick line out. There we go. Passes <laughs> it. The broken quick line out mechanic. Keeping the ball alive with all these. Oh, Lamaro goes in. Gets taken down. Go wide. No one in position there for me at all. They're scrapping for the okay, we need to spread out wider, guys. We're all over the place. And that's an up and under from. The ball is taken cleanly. Oh, I went for the interception. The Shouldn't side, have. Furlong. He's keeping the ball in play. Oh dear God! 
James Lowe got some speed. Oh, look at that offload. Oh, yeah, look at that offload. What a ridiculous offload. <laughs> That's <laughs> Keelan Doris keeping up with James Lowe. That's ridiculous. Um, Joe Walker says, worked as a start. Yeah, worked as a start. And then it then it stopped. Look at this pass. Where's Keelan Doris? How does he know Keelan Doris is waiting on that wing? What an outrageous out-the-back pass. Okay. Yeah, shift to double tap your left or right pass control in quick succession and the player loops. Is that... I think I've done that before and not known what the button control is to actually do it. I've seen players do a little interlink loop, and I've always wondered what it was that I pushed to do it. I don't actually know that was the thing. I will see if I can get it to work, because if it is, that will definitely be used in future forwards. games. Let's have a look. They took the ball in, and it's still but if you lied to me, Hansi. <laughs> the team keeps You're trying to the ball sabotage in. me. Oh, my God. Somebody get out. Is my oh, that's right. It's got my defensive line so tight. Ball. I can't do anything. Oh, he's... They're going to work hard on, for the get in ball. there. And again, and again. Keller, yeah, there charging. we go. Okay. Give it a go. Give it a go to the left. Well, it probably helps if they don't get tackled Instead instantly as soon as they get the ball. What a turnover. Absolutely blitzed on. Um, let me switch my Got preset underneath down. It. Superb. Oh, that's a nice kick to the back corner. He caught oh, that ball well. Brilliantly catch. positioned. And a ridiculous game. My God, James touch. Lowe's having a great game so far. You need to get the ball first. <laughs> putting all the forwards into the lineup. Shots fired from Hansi. <laughs> you need to be good at the game in order for it to work. <laughs> Come on, Rex. Take it up the line. Okay, here we go. Oh, my God. And they run into each other. This is going to be a real struggle. First bit of space I had for it. Okay. Zanon. Nah, Send it on right, to you Arnie. Oh, what a ridiculous thing. <laughs> what, he catch it with his crotch? How on earth did he get that one back? Oh. There's one fast James Ryan. CC, Lachesi, out to Iwani. Okay, let's do a little sidestep. Lovely, okay. Grab a kick. We need four tries. There's number one. 20 minutes in. <laughs> Deja vu anyone from the Wales game? <laughs> what a move. Okay. Seven all. We draw it square. Just like the game hasn't kicked off yet. Okay, we'll take it. We've got some room to open up. Uh, when you are in a intercept position... Press X to catch the ball. Well, even without the, the quick time event, you mean? I've tried a couple of different things. Rugby 20 line. was brilliant for it. Um, wow. That you could just run with the player. You run them in line with where the ball goes. And they probably more often than not actually got the interception. And it was such a nice system that worked really well. Let's go with the number eight. Here we go. They weren't expecting Bramstein. Oh, no. Here's the tackle. Here's the ruck being created. Oh, wonderful offload. Nearly, nearly opened up down that wing, and they've somehow turned that over. That's outrageous. I had about seven people there. No way you've got that back right there. Brilliant defending. God. Rock. The attacking team keeps the ball. He offloads the ball out of the tackle. Manages to How get are they the still getting away. this out? <laughs> oh, so incredible defensive work by Italy. And they've still got it out. The tackle made, but the ball kept alive. Oh, boys. A fresh move know. here, Ben. Something new. Let's see if they can take the defence by surprise. Yeah, you're not doing Support. that. I knew That's what you were trying to do. I knew you were trying to do some clever little kicks through. Defense. Here we go. Bang! Take down Josh van der Fleer, right? Get on the front foot. Here we go. Add some pressure. Out wide. One on one. You want? He's got to the ground. Now he has to release the ball. I'm basically just relying on Yuani now. He's my only, my only talisman for this team. To do anything. The ball's been burgled. Oh, he's that one again. What a great kick. I might actually see if I can get this down. Bear line. Oh, that's so close. It's a full line. So close to being right where I needed it to be. Just a bit too much. Intercepted. Very skillful handling. It's played high into the air. This little uh, up and under from. Receiving a line out seems to be working for me. That over the last like two games. Apparently, the Italy have got some sort of. Prevalence of that. 
There's not a great deal of Come support on. there. No, don't all get around the ruck and outside the it's ruck and wait for the players to get the most. Came off. Just a no. lack of accuracy. Yeah, beat what the tackle. By the ring good job there. He's pulled out one of his tricks. They set up a ruck. And the commentators get in behind him now. <laughs> they never celebrate me when I do a sidestep. Bad, but well counted. Okay, let's just spread up. Right, I'm waiting for the yeah. Oh, he threw me off. off. Just a lack of outrageous. And they've kept possession at the back of this ruck. Okay, hold the line. Good job. And again, nice double tackle in there. No, Still struggling to get the ball, boys. We actually need to do something in order to score tries. Okay, Yuani, one on one, the one man army. Oh, <laughs> filthy, absolutely filthy try. <laughs> I'm just using cheap mechanics now to score tries. Oh yes, we'll enjoy the replay of that. Look at that. Cut back inside and then sidestep back the other way. Hugo Keenan left in the dust and nearly didn't score the try. Literally landed on the try line. <laughs> um, there was a great chance for the the double tap squandered. <laughs> If only my team did things better, I would suddenly, I would suddenly be able to do stuff. Okay, one minute before half time. Could we even get a try here? Lamaro, great catch. Oh, God, I can't get the ball. Does the double tap work if you just don't ever get the ball back? And see, is that a, is that a, oh, no, no. Great tackle. Superb cover tackle. Get in there, all of you. How have I got six people in that ruck and not win it? Good job. Good job. That was that was some hard-fought victory there. We'll take that one. Get it off. Get it gone. <laughs> Half time. Okay, how are we doing stamina-wise? Our stamina is way better than it was in the last game, so we'll, we'll probably be happy with that. Uh, Anzi says uh, that Yuani try would probably happen in real life. I would back him one on one. Yeah, I, I, I mean, so far he's all I've got. <laughs> he is the only weapon in my arsenal for uh, Ridley at this point. Lovely little broken thing. Okay, we'll take that. I did do a, uh, a series. Was it after the last Six Nations? It might have been after the last Six Nations, uh, which I've done a couple for a couple of times, where I play the the Six Nations with. Um, with Italy on, on the hardest difficulty of whatever rugby game is out at the time. And there was one where Yuani basically saved our Grand Slam run. <laughs> the one-man army of Yuani. Someone commented on that video the other day. It came up with my thing. <laughs> because I just started losing my mind. And when he did it, on oh, again, he's away again. Oh, the wind has been very harsh. A foul, but the referee is playing a Knock on. He do. Terrible catch from Hugo Keenan. They'll make the most of that. Scrum. When they close the line, put your hands in the ruck, give away a penalty, uh, they will go the to the poles. Better than seven, yeah. I mean, at this point, the the win doesn't matter for me. I, like, If we're going to come third, we may as well come fourth. <laughs> it's all about those tries. I don't care how many we can see it along the way. Here we go. Jim Varney gets it out. Terrible pass. Zanon, oh, another terrible ball pass. Ball Everyone really sucked. Position. All of you did terribly. Still in their <laughs> How can that happen? Somebody needs to step up for this team. Get in. Ball. Attacking options here for the number nine. The ball is being nicely moved around. Well, Zanon did incredibly what? well there, Zanon. and somehow we got turned over again. Right, we're back over here. God, the, ends up the, the bounce of the arms. ball is so in favour of them constantly. We need support. Yep, we've gone the wrong way there. Oh, stop throwing the ball. There's the tackle. Just lost 50 meters from nothing. Go right. There we go. In they go to the ruck. I've also just noticed, I don't know if anyone else has been noticing, my players are running away from the tackle. They have to get the ball to the winger. And they keep possession. After one of my players is tackled, the entirety of my support is actually running the opposite way to get in position for the next pass. It's a rock. Oh, I'm they half tempted to just concede seven line. here and get back up the field. Moving the ball well. He gets I don't know how much time this is going to waste to do nothing. 
the ball is being moved very quickly. That's clever. Inspired. Oh, he just tackled Juani for the sake of it. Referee, get involved. The referee says that's a rock. Come on, boys. Spread it out. Don't let him do this. And Don't let him do some to a rock. Billy Elliot dancing around you. <laughs> I hate that that sidestep animation. Just so dumb. They just they just literally do like a bit of a bit of a tango, and they suddenly somehow get around you. There's not a great deal of support there. Is everything we need? Go, go, Yuani. A ball along the ground, passing to the defenders. He's there to challenge for the ball. They've managed to keep possession of the ball. And up and under takes play outside the 22. The risk paid off with that. Oh, <gasps> David CC nearly got there. Go on, Zanon. Go on, Zanon. Get over that line. We're up to three. We're up to three. Great work. Clinically executed. One left. One left to do. Uh, if you play a low level match against France, Dupont kills you with his breaks. Game loves him. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it comes from a French studio. Why do you think he's not only on the front cover, but he's also in the main animation, clattering one of the uh, the New Zealand players? <laughs> they get backed pretty hard in this game. Entermac's another one. Entermac in the in the French team is is like he's like watching the Terminator. The way he just walks through people, Lit tack it takes three people to tackle him. He just doesn't stop. He literally dodges one, hands off another one, then does a kick. Oh god, what are you all doing? What are you all doing? Why are you all interlinking like you're in... <laughs> oh, James Lowe again is killing me on this wing. Let's take him. Okay. I mean, I have all of my players to the left. They have three. Surely it gets out. Sure. My god. My god. Why are you all doing this to me? <laughs> trying to help you, Italy. Oh, I can't get the ball back now. Okay, we need we need other things. Okay, come on. Big sub time. We need a big switch. Everyone's coming on. Everyone that can do anything is about to come on now. Uh, and three golden set comes on. Right, leave him alone. Let him get the try. Playing tactically. Let him have it. Let's get up that side of the field. We need one more try. All our subs on now. Ten minutes left. Full tactics. You never see this in international rugby. <laughs> imagine, imagine what would happen in international rugby if they just gave up and said, ah, let him score, let him score. We'll get back up here. Okay, come on. Carlo Canna. Put that bad boy down the field. We'll take it, we'll take it. We're up to their 22. Didn't want to jump? Cool, no worries. <laughs> as intended, as planned, absolutely. Don't let him through that gap. Get in, get in. Oh. Tackle. Oh. It suddenly opened up, it suddenly opened up. Go left. He somehow did a, a loop to himself. The double tap. <laughs> Hansi's double tap suddenly came in. It was not what I expected it to be. Oh, stop it. Why are you not supported by anyone else on your team ever? Okay, Brex, you gotta do something there, buddy. You're all on your own. Alright, I need to I need to sort this out. We're in we're in trouble. Okay, let this team line up. How are we losing these? Just don't kick it out! Why would you do that? <laughs> That's outrageous. What have they done that for? <laughs> You've already lost. Don't do that to me. It just kicked it off the field, just to ruin my chances of getting somewhere in the Six Nations. Outrageous. Third place. Damn it. 
<laughs> what a what a cheap move by the island team there. They're obviously annoyed that they were losing that game. Get it off the pitch. Um, we must try and play a game with Iowa West at number ten. I don't know who that is, Hansi. Is that is that a French player? I don't even know the the name. Unless you there's a, a spelling mistake in there. Iowa West. Let me just double check in case that's the one in there. Oh, I bet it'll be the... Oh, sorry, of course, I've got the mod now. I don't know who that'll suddenly turn into. Uh, so, I I assume it's... Oh, sorry, wait, no, a Kiwi. Is, in, is he a bench player? Where... Because New Zealand, of course, were licensed in this game. I don't even know the name. Uh, our Takia, our Lord Tuipulatu. No, I don't know who you mean. <laughs> but if I can find out, uh, I will absolutely uh, give it a go. Right, guys, it is 10 past 10. I did say I was going to stream till 10. That game ended up taking a little bit longer because I really wanted to see if I could get there. Unfortunately, Ireland decided to uh, to ruin our um, <laughs> our terrible run. Oh, he plays for Toulon. Okay. I will have a look at Toulon at some point uh, in the future. But thank you so much to everyone who has come out to the stream today. Don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Not even holding the controller. Uh, thank you to everyone who has come out to the stream today, guys. If you've enjoyed, make sure you do leave this video a like. Of course, we've got a bunch of Six Nations videos coming out over the next week, over the whole of the Six Nations. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos as they come out. I hope you've all enjoyed this one tonight, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.